Hello everyone and welcome to Uncivil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you will enjoy this live legal educational content, and today may be the day I earn your first subscription. For today, we have a group of stories. We are first going to start our attention with Alec Baldwin and Rust. The plot thickens as search warrants get issued. We are then going to move on to a story of a California student who is working as a diversity specialist. You'll never guess what she did. Then we're going to move on to discussions of a sovereign citizen using videos I haven't seen. And then we will do some bad legal takes from the account, bad legal takes to cheer us all up from all the stupid. How fun. We're going to do all those things. And I'll uh, preface every story with the intro in case I want to wind up cutting this and reusing them for dailies. So in case you're wondering why I'm doing that, that would be the reason why. So you get to hear me say the intro again. For today's story, well, no, let's try it again. For today's story, we talk about the latest in the Rust shooting investigation and Alec Baldwin's phone being seized pursuant to a state, state, the, the, the. For today's story, we are talking about the updates in the Rust shooting and Alec Baldwin's phone being searched pursuant to a search warrant. Hello everyone and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you'll enjoy this legal education content and today may be the day I earn your subscription. For today's story, we are covering the latest in the Rust shooting, a shooting involving Alec Baldwin that resulted in the death of an assistant director on set who was also helping with doing photography. And this is still being investigated. And most notably, perhaps we have seen a search warrant be issued for Mr. Baldwin's phone. So we're going to read the search warrant because it's always nice to see how one looks. Now, different places do them differently. So this isn't like a universal format or, or something, but it will be very informative anyway, because they will look similar enough when you see them again, that hopefully you'll be able to recognize them. It's always nice to see what one of these legal documents looks like, right? So let's do go ahead and do that. So this is going to be the, the, in the, uh, this is the search warrant that is actually issued, the actual document, the actual, the actual thing, the actual warrant, right? So here it is. In the ma uh, so this is in, in the matter to issuance of a search warrant in regards to the search, the seizure and search of a cellular phone believed to be an Apple iPhone due to conversations between a fiance, that would be the person swearing out the warrant, and Alec Baldwin being conducted through iMessaging. The phone belongs to Alec Baldwin, is believed to be in his possession, and has a mobile number of something ending in 3999. The full telephone number is known. However, it is redacted for confidentiality and privacy. The carrier for the phone is Verizon Wireless. So yes, of course, because this is a public document, not everyone gets a copy to Mr. Baldwin's phone, but hey, you know the last four digits, so you know, use your imagination, I guess, for the rest. Search warrant to the state of New Mexico to any author, officer authorized to execute this warrant. Proof by affidavit for search warrant having been submitted to me, I am satisfied there's probable cause that the person named or property described in this affidavit is located where aligned in the affidavit. And I find, so that means where is it? Because you, you have to specify with specificity the thing to be searched and the place to be searched, right? So you have to know both those things. Where is it and what is it? For the person or property described in the affidavit, serving this warrant together with a copy of the affidavit and making the search, and if the person or property is found there, to seize the person or the property and hold for safekeeping until further order of the court. You are further directed to prepare a written inventory of any person or property seized. You are further directed to file this return and written inventory within the court promptly after its execution. So yeah, this is your search warrant. Go forth and execute it. And also there's a line here that I kind of missed that this has to be served between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. So this isn't this isn't a nighttime warrant. So in this jurisdiction, what they consider to be nighttime is between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. 6 a.m. is not considered to be night. Well, anyways, you have to you can surge it within that thing. All right. 
Okay. So here's the affidavit for the search warrant, right? So we, so uh, according to the U.S. Constitution, of course, according to the U.S. Constitution, right, a search warrant has to be predicated on a sworn oath or affidavit. To that effect, it's in the Fourth Amendment. It has to specify the things to be searched and the places to be seized. So you have to specify what are your reasons for searching? What is the thing? And where is the thing? So you can go do that. So that that is all the things that the that the Constitution requires. So, so we're going to tell you. So we're telling you what it is. So the cellular phone of Alec Baldwin, and we're going to block out his birth date, even though like everyone knows what it is. But okay. So we want to seize the phone. A forensic download of this cellular phone to include digital images, digital movies, emails, social network accounts, social network private messages, deleted digital images, deleted digital movies, evidence of multiple or deleted social network accounts, internet browser history, phone book, stored contacts, network connection logs, text messages, MMS and SMS, to include aftermarket text applications, so that would be like WhatsApp, for example, Phone use timelines, event logs, database cache histories, image cache histories, passwords or documents containing possible passwords, access to any cloud drives, which may contain demo, digital images or digital movies or documents including passwords. All contacts, including names, phone numbers, addresses, and all other information included with the contact. Recent call list that will display all recent phone numbers that have been called on the cellular phone or have been dialed from the cellular phone. All graphic files and multimedia files that could include photographs taken by the phone or transferred onto the phone by another service, video taken by the phone or transferred onto the phone by another service, or any other mixed media messages that might contain both graphic and video files. This also includes any audio only recordings that were taken by the phone or transferred to the phone by another service. Some of these files could appear as text, but be part of a media presentation. All short message service messages and mixed media messages stored on the phone, including any attachments with the messages, including the recipient's address and date, date time stamp information, commonly associated with these messages. SMS and MMS are not limited only to text messages, as it's common in some phones to use different services than standard text messaging. Again, think WhatsApp as a, as in a good example. And these messages can be in other applications running on the cellular phone. So all those ones too. Any, any owner information found on the phone, identifying the telephone number that's assigned to it, what cellular provider, and any other name or other demographical information commonly found on cellular phones. Any global positioning system data that can be stored on some telephones, which includes physical locations associated with dates and times of where the phone was physically present. Any other removable memory present on the phone that could contain any above items. This includes SIM cards. The affiance, that would be the police officer who is do, uh, the, uh, the, person, the police officer who's swearing this out. The affiant also requests to take photographs of the phone, including photographs of some or all the information contained on the phone as is presented on the screen, which might have occurred if the phone cannot be downloaded. So in the event that for some reason they can't download it, they say, hey, how about just taking a bunch of, sh a bunch of d shots with your camera and do it that way. The affiant is requesting all information and data from the cellular phone in relation to the production of Rust and any member working on the production. Pursuant to ECPA, no information will be collected as unrelated to the objective of the investigation. Okay, so that is a lot of things. That is a lot of things. And you know, one of the re and you may not realize how much exposure you have on your cell phone, right? You may not have thought about it or you may have thought about it in parts. But you may not realize just how many things are on your phone, how much data is on your phone, and how many crimes are the phone is a central feature. The phone is a dominant feature. That's like the, may, the way policing is done these days is from cellular phones. Where they were, when they were, broadcast towers, stuff on the phone, who you called, where you went, photos you took, photos you deleted, contacts you created, contacts you deleted social media accounts, anything that it can access, all those passwords, all that stuff, right? We want to get all that information from this phone. We would like to know, for example, although not limited to, who you might have called in the immediate aftermath of the shooting. Were you talking to a PR firm? Were you talking to your lawyer? Were you talking to your mother or your wife? You know, who did you call? Did you send him any photos? Did you take any photos? of the scene. Did you take any, did you take anything? Can we show where you were? 
Did, were there any calls that were made, perhaps leading up to the shooting? So calls we might be particularly interested in might be, for example, from the assistant director, from the armorer, from other people who might have called to express safety concerns about the set, or emails or text messages along those lines or other things that might go to show your state of mind in the in the hours and perhaps even days leading up to and leading from the event, right? There's a nice little window of time where we might be interested in things. You know, were you sleep deprived? Were you working really long hours driving a lot? Were you sleep deprived? Were you negligent that way? Were you, were you intoxicated? Were you drinking? Were you on drugs? Are there are there are there records that might that might display that? Oh, who did you talk to? Oh, now let's go talk to those people. What did you guys talk about? And so forth and so on. Right. So you may not fully appreciate just how much data is on your phone, but you know it's a lot. It's a lot of data, and so that data they're going to comb through it and find the text messages, the emails, the photos that might be exist, photos that he took or received, either before or after the event. Photos before the event, why would those be relevant? Think. Think. Why would photos after the event be relevant? Think. Right? It's like, yeah, you can imagine scenarios of why this information might be useful. So, yeah, we want all those things. And, yeah, we're, we're, we want it, and we you're going to give us your phone, and we're going to download the, all the things, and we're going to find out what you've been up to as part of our investigation. So we're pretty serious. All right, so here are the facts that support this search warrant, right? So we've told you what we want to search and how. And now we're gonna tell you why we think we can do this. Why, why, are, why do we have probable cause a crime might have been committed? Now, I know this is a bit ridiculous because we all know why there's probable cause, but you know, we still have to spell it out anyway. Um, so the, F, the affiant, the person swearing this, is a full-time certified police officer in the state of New Mexico, currently commissioned in salaries, Salary by Santa Fe County Sheriff's Department, where he has served as a violent crimes detective in the Criminal Investigation Division. They have four years of, of law enforcement experience. The affiant is aware that the suspects, victims, and or witnesses may document information relating to the crimes on computers or other forms of social media. No shit. No shit. The amount of people who document their own crimes is amazing. Or or maybe it's not amazing, but it's it's a lot. And it might not necessarily be you, but it might be someone. And you, I mean, we'll we'll get to all those people, right? They often make or re and or receive telephone calls and messages before, during, or after the commission of crimes. Yeah, such information, if it exists, may be material and relevant to the investigation. This warrant shall include the viewing, listening to, copying, transcribing, transferring, or and or recording of the data on the herein described items to be seized. We get copies of all that shit. The police officer swearing to this is aware through training and experience that people who have apparent knowledge of an incident often reach out to individuals involved in ongoing criminal investigations. Individuals could also have been at the incident location scene and later attempt to communicate with each other during the time of law enforcement personnel or executing the warrant. Yeah, maybe it's possible that they were talking to each other to coordinate stories or to wonder about what someone some might say or something like that. Hey, why were you talking to this member of the cast or this member of the cast or this member of the cast? What were you talking about? Were you coordinating your stories? Were you planning your defenses together? Were you conspiring after the fact to perhaps withhold information or stuff, right? Yeah. And the cop is like, well, I've been doing this for four years and I already know this. I believe him. I believe he knows these things. I know these things. We're not idiots over here, right? On Thursday, October the 21st of 2021, the Santa Fe Police Department received a call at 545 Bonanza Creek Road in reference to multiple victims with a gunshot wound. So apparently the set is 545 Bonanza Creek Road. Ookie. The Criminal Investigation Division responded to the incident a short time later. The initial call appeared to be at approximately 1.48 p.m. to the South Santa Fe Regional Communication Center. An individual by the name of Manny Mitchell called 911 while listening to the 911 call. Manny advised it that they needed an ambulance at Bonanza Creek Ranch due to two people being shot at a movie set accidentally. The dispatcher then transfers Manny over to medical dispatch. Manny again 
uh, advising the medical dispatcher help his need immediately to, due to being shot by a prop gun. The Santa Fe County deputies respond to the scene and advise there was one female with a gunshot wound to the chest and a male with a gunshot wound to the stomach slash shoulder. The female, identified as Helena Hitchens, was transported to the University of New Mexico Hospital at Albuquerque via care flight. The male, identified as Joel Souza, was transported to St. Vincent Hospital in Santa Fe by Santa Fe County Medics. While the female was conducting interviews at the sheriff's office, it was discovered Helena passed away due to her injuries. The affiants, who is the cop swearing to all this, interviewed multiple people in reference to the incident to include the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, the gun handler, Alec Baldwin, and the assistant director, David Halls. So, yeah. Oh, apologies. The gun handler and Alec Baldwin. Yeah, so the person, the armorer, the assistant, the, the gun handler, and the assistant director. These are definitely your three principal suspects over here. During Hannah's interview, she says during the morning of the incident, 10-21-2021, she got, she got to work and got the guns out. So she was there that morning. She advised her coworker, Sarah Zachary, to help her out with the morning task. Hannah advised after they retrieved the guns, they took them to set. Hannah said while on set, she, she dummied the guns up with dummy rounds. Hannah stated they got on set around 7.30 a.m., but didn't dun dummy the guns up until a short time before lunch. So, they, 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 so she is saying, she is saying that they went there that morning. She asked some for someone for help. They got the guns, took them to set, and they 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 dummied up the guns with dummy rounds at some point prior to lunch. Okay. Hannah advised that when they all returned from lunch, Sarah pulled the gun out out of the safe, the gun utilized by Alec, and handed it to her. So this was this was an interesting aspect, and this, of course, this is not necessarily true. I don't believe the cop is lying. I believe he's telling the truth. But what they're saying to him may or may not be true, right? This is what they're telling him. And sometimes people lie to the police. Of course, sometimes police lie. But we'll assume for the moment that the police officer is telling the truth. Uh, people who people who you know might be facing criminal liability are more motivated than just a cop on a normal day, all things considered. So we'll be a little bit more skeptical towards them and not quite skeptical to the officer for that reason. So they say, well, this went into a safe. So we loaded it with dummy rounds. It went into the safe. It came out of the safe because there had been speculation that this gun might have been used during lunch for some, uh, you know, plinking around. And so they're saying, hey, that didn't happen. Whatever, whatever might have been true for other guns, this particular gun was in a safe. Okay. So Sarah pulls the gun out of the safe and hands it to her. So she's saying it was in the safe because presumably she sees this. Um, the affiant, the cop, asked Hannah if she loaded the gun after lunch, to which she stated it was already loaded before they went to lunch. Hannah advised we had the gun the whole time before that and nothing happened. And I wasn't there and they weren't even supposed to be pulling the hammer back. The cop who's doing the interviews asked Hannah to clarify whether the guns were located before lunch, to which she reported they were inside with the camera crew and she was hardly allowed inside due to COVID preparations. So maybe someone else had access to the safe. I mean, it's possible. Hannah said at one point, David Halls had the gun when he was sitting in for the shot. She advised she handed the gun off to David while he was sitting in and this handoff occurred after lunch. So now we've got it moving through a couple people's hands that we know about, All right? So we got this guy, David, we got this this girl, Sarah. It came out of a safe, but she wasn't with it because she wasn't in there during COVID. Did someone else have access to the safe? I mean, you would hope the answer is no, but I would be I would I would be surprised if the assistant director didn't have the code for the safe. I mean, he really shouldn't, because it really should be the armor for obvious safety reasons. But you know, that's obviously going to be part of the defense. Did anyone know the code? And did those people tell people who might have told people who might have told people, right? Who had the code? Did anyone go in and get it in between lunch and change it? I mean, you know, these are questions that we get to ask.
Hannah advised that she handed the gun to Alec Baldwin a couple times in the morning inside the set. Hannah said at one point David Halls had the gun while he was sitting in for the shot. She advised she handed the gun off to Dave while he was sitting in, and this handoff occurred after lunch. The cop who's doing all these investigations asked Hannah when the last time she loaded the gun was. And she advised she loaded the gun with five dummy rounds before lunch. Hannah stated there was one round that wouldn't go in. So after lunch, she took the cleaner, cleaned it out, and put another round in. which brought the total to six rounds loaded in the weapon. Hannah described the gun to be a long barrel Colt 45. Uh, okay. So this is, this is, we're, we're beginning to paint a picture in our mind of things that might've happened. So we loaded this six shot revolver with only five shots because apparently for some reason, the six shot wouldn't go in. And we couldn't be bothered to fix that before lunch. So we put it in the safe. And then after lunch, we presumably cleared out the cylinder. And then we put in this sixth round. Hmm. 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 I'm, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that might be the moment where possibly things are going wrong in this picture. Wouldn't go in. No, all the no. I'm, yeah, uh, apparently it wouldn't go in. Uh, so yeah, they cleaned it out and put another round in, which brought us to six. <laughs> Hannah advised they all went to lunch at 1230. And after they came back, she and Sarah took the guns to set. She said the guns were in bags at this point and described the bags to be like socks. Fine. She said the guns were checked on set. However, she didn't really check it too much due to it being locked up at lunch. Hannah said that after she did the check, she put in the last round. Uh-oh. Let's just, let's just appreciate what that says again. Hannah says after she did the check, she put in the last round. Uh, okay. So for many, many problems, the, the, the alarm bells, the alarm bells should be going off in your heads legally and firearm safety. The, the alarm bells should be going off in your head right about now. If they're not, you're not paying attention to what's being said. Uh, so yeah, so after lunch, we had the, we had the gun in a sock and we, I checked it, I checked it, but I didn't check it that much. So I didn't check it that much negligence. And after I checked it, I put it in the sixth round and I didn't check it again. Negligence. Oops. 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 Uh, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like there, I'm feeling like the armorer is an increasingly likely defendant in some future action because you see what she did here you see what she did here? She talked to the police. We wouldn't know any of this stuff. She talked to the police. We wouldn't know. And we certainly wouldn't know it from her. So some of this stuff is stuff she only knows because at best other people were nearby and kind of seeing maybe what she was doing, but they were, they had other things to do. So who knows what level of attention. And even if they were paying attention, they couldn't like see exactly what she's doing. So we're getting all kinds of fun and exciting information right from the potential defendant's own mouth. And you know what juries really, really love? You know what they love like more than anything in the wor world? They love it when words come from the defendant's own mouth. It's like their favorite thing in the world. Like things coming from other people's mouth can be damning and can definitely get you to prison. But even better, words coming from the defendant's own mouth. She talked to the police people. We wouldn't know this. We wouldn't be able to in our mind, we wouldn't be able to in our mind start constructing a criminal manslaughter case in our mind 
based on these new exciting facts that suddenly are like, oh, I take these in fun, exciting facts and I'm already writing my openings, uh, my opening arguments in my head as we speak for the prosecution. Thanks for telling me all these wonderful new things. That's very great. Thanks. <sighs> Hannah advised a short time later, she remembered she could hear the gunshot, then heard people calling for a medic emergency. Hannah stated that she looked to see Joel Souza on the ground and asked if it was the gun, to which Dave responded it was the gun that went off. Deep. Hannah stated that when she checked the gun after the incident, she checked the cartridge that would have been the one fired and said the first one pulled out didn't have that, pointing to, a proje pointing to the projectile end of a bullet. It, it no longer had a bullet. That's, that's true. The bullet was now in Joel. Hannah said she checked all, by the way, just as a minor technical issue for the gun people in the room, I am well aware that the, the, the thing that's left is called the cartridge, not the bullet, but let's give them a break, okay? <sighs> Hannah said that she checked all the other rounds and they had a ringing sound when she shook them or a hole in the side indicating it was a dummy round. Hannah advised the box of dummies may have some wonky rounds in it. And they received the box approximately a week ago from Seth. Her supplier. Uh, Hannah advised the box of dummies may have some wonky rounds. Danger. Danger. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. You knew that. You, you knew that. How fun and exciting. Thank you for telling us. You knew. You knew. And we're aware. You knew and were aware that some of the rounds in the box were wonky. And you were using the box anyway, with that specific knowledge in mind. Don't talk to the police, people. This would be why we tell you don't talk to the police. This would be exactly the reason we tell you don't talk to the police. Thank you for all this super helpful information as I continue to write the opening remarks and closing remarks in my head for your upcoming manslaughter trial. This is just really great stuff over here. Wow. Hannah made a statement that she did not believe anyone else on the film set would be that malicious to breathe live ammo on the set. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. She says she doesn't believe anyone on set would be malicious enough to bring in live ammo. Okay, get okay, kids. Okay, kids. Let's play at home. Why is this statement a problem for Hannah? Why is it a bad thing that she is saying to this? I'll give you a couple seconds to figure out the answer. Okay, you only get 15 seconds. The answer, well, the reason is, the answer is because she just basically excluded all the other suspects by her own words. She excluded all the other suspects. I don't believe anyone would be malicious enough to bring a live round onto the set. She excluded everyone else. If no one else would bring a live round on live round onto the set, if no one else would bring a live round on the set, what necessarily must be true? If no one else would bring a live round onto the set, what necessarily must be true? The answer would be, it was you who brought the round onto the set. Thank you for excluding all the other possibilities. That's just genius work. Your future defense lawyer thanks you. Oof. Oof. Hannah confirmed that when she was handed the gun after the incident, she was the only one to manipulate it. And it was closed when it was handed to her. Wow. 
Alec Baldwin was brought into the interview room at approximately 5.12. He was advised of his Miranda rights and agreed to speak with the detectives. Okay, once again, once again, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're an accomplished actor. You cannot play this game. I don't care if you're an accomplished attorney. You cannot play this game. If you try to play this game, you're an idiot. Okay? The point when they read you your Miranda rights is the point when you should say, you know what, officer, I'm going to have to go and get an attorney and I'll have to get back to you. And you should leave the room. When they tell you, you have a right to remain silent. This is a big fucking blinking clue, 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 clue. Shut up. <laughs> Tell them, I sorry, officer, I, I, I'm gonna have to get an attorney and get back to you and then just never get back to them ever. Call, call your attorney and be like, all calls go through this guy. I'm not talking ever. But that's okay. Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin is a trained, experienced actor. He's won awards for his acting. I'm sure he's going to be able to get through this without incriminating himself. Lord have mercy. <sighs> Alec advised in the scene that he slowly takes the gun out of the holster, then very dramatically turns and cocks the hammer, which is when the gun went off. He's he's telling the police he manipulated the hammer. The police might be able to get that evidence from somewhere else, but you just told them from your own words. The jury's going to eat that shit up. He said it was supposed to be a cold gun, so no flash charge or anything should have gone off. Alex said all the rounds in the gun were supposed to be cosmetic or dummy rounds. Alex advised that when the gun went off, he could recall Helena Hutchins going down to the ground and Joel Souza start to scream. Alex said that because they were in rehearsal, he assumed, he assumed, he assumed, he assumed he had an empty gun. Therefore, when he shot gel gun, Helena was right there in front of him. Don't talk to the police, kids. Don't talk, please. Oh, that's it's, it's interesting. You assumed, so you didn't you didn't check yourself. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if we can find any evidence that you know you were aware that you should check yourself. I wonder if, for example, being a member of the Screen Screen, Screen Actors Guild and their guidelines after the Crow might be somewhat informative. I wonder of what you might have learned from prior sets about checking the gun yourself. I wonder what every armor you've ever worked with in the past thirty years might have taught you. Hmm. And you assumed. How interesting. So you didn't check yourself. Don't talk to the police, kids. Alex described the gun to be a period cold. He said that there were emails transferred back and forth, and this would be, for example, why we're saying we want to look at his emails, because he's telling us, look at the emails. He just said, hey, I have emails. I have emails about this. Maybe you like you maybe you like to know about the emails. Would you like to know about the emails? Let me tell you about the emails. Let me tell you about something about some emails. Emails. The cops like, ooh, emails, fun. I wonder if I could get a search warrant for that. <sighs> he said there were emails transferred back and forth between Hannah and him that showed different styles of guns. He said he requested a bigger gun, and he also showed him different styles of knives for production. Alex was shown a Colt with a brown handle and a cherry handle, and he only chose the one with the brown handle. So depending on his level of gun knowledge, which, you know, he's handled lots of guns in the past, so we might be able to get where we want to be. But, you know, he picked the gun. So, you know, you picked the murder weapon. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. You're the one who picked it. it. Certainly doesn't hurt the case. I mean, for the prosecution, I mean, not the defense, when I say that. In a brief search of Hannah, of uh, the brief search of Helena Hutchins' phones, the, F, the, the officer over here discovered conversations about the Rust production going back to July the 14th. The affiant, or cop friend, also discovered photographs of receipts in the phone dating back to September the 7th, showing various receipts of businesses in Santa Fe. Affiant believes gathering information prior to the film start date of Rust is essential for a full investigation. I would think so. I would think some of that information might be potentially very relevant. There's a colorable, there's colorable references, relevancies. 
what what businesses were you going to? Were any of them gun manufacturers or target ranges or bars? <clears throat> the the cop over here requested Alex's phone from him as well as his attorneys and was instructed to acquire a warrant. Well, that was definitely the right answer. That was definitely the right that was definitely the right answer. Go get your search warrant. That was definitely the right answer. You don't want to hand the cops your phone and say, please search my phone. But you know what else you don't want to do? You know what else you don't want to do? You don't want to tell them all the things from your own words that tells them why it would be helpful to search the gun so then they can tell the they, they can tell the judge about why it would be helpful to search the gun so they can get the search warrant without blinking an eye. You could, you could make them try to actually, you know, work for it. But you know why? Why bother when you can just hand them the information yourself and be like, "I'm not going to get a search warrant. I'm not going to give it to you unless I get a search warrant." Oh, by the way, here's all the information you could possibly ever want to get a search warrant. Yeah. Alec Baldwin has contacted this, this cop. So Alec Baldwin and the cop have talked. I'm sure as part of the investigation, because apparently Alec Baldwin has no problem talking to the police in person, on the phone or anywhere else. Uh, so therefore the cop believes this to be the phone number Alex uses on a regular basis. Well, I received a couple phone calls from this phone number and it's always Alex. So, you know, kind of reasonable conclusion. The, the cop over here is aware of the entirety of the cellular phone, however, redacted the beginning of that number for confidentiality and privacy. Cop friend also believes the phone is an iPhone due to the text messages being iMessages, which is typical of an Apple device. Cop friend is requesting a warrant for seizures and search of Alec Baldwin's cell phone to search for any evidence relating to the death of Helena Hutchins. Cop friend believes there may be evidence on the phone. Yeah, uh, there's definitely evidence on the phone. I'm quite positive. I don't know how much and how incriminating, but there's something. Due to individuals using cellular phones during and or after the commissions of crime, such information, if it exists, it definitely exists to some degree, may be material and relevant. Yeah. Cop friend was also made aware that there were several email and text messages sent and received regarding the movie production from the course of interviews. I wonder what those, t those emails and text messages might say. I wonder what they might say about safety conditions or people being overtired, overworked, having to drive too far and not fully concentrating and so forth and so on. Cop friend has not included every fact relevant to this investigation, I believe that, but has included only those facts that are believed necessary to establish probable cause for the issuance of a warrant. Well, let me tell you my friends, let me tell you my friends, judge on civil law over here, judge on civil law would sign this search warrant every day and twice on Sunday. There is way more than enough information here. Way more than enough information. Much of it coming directly from Mr. Alec Baldwin himself, which is super helpful. You know, more than enough information here. So judge on civil law is gonna sign that warrant, man. Thanks for all the super help. Thanks for all the super helpful information, Mr. Baldwin. Made my decision much, much easier. I had to think about it for, you know, all the quarter of a second. <laughs> uh, good times. As required by the New Mexico Electronic Communications Privacy Act, so New Mexico has their own privacy act, so state law, the information obtained through the execution warrant that is unrelated to the objective end warrant and not exculpatory shall be sealed and not subject to further review, disclosure except pursuant to court order. So. Anything they find that's not relevant is going to be sealed. But first, of course, they have to look at it to determine whether or not it's relevant, right? So, yeah. Anything anything in the phone that's not relevant, we're going to put into a seal and not look at it anymore. But, of course, we have to look at it to determine whether or not it's relevant. So we have to look at all the things. So kind of what's the point of putting in seal after the fact, but whatever. So, you know, yeah. What may be considered exculpatory by the defense may not be immediately clear to investigation or, pro or prosecution. Fair, fair. There might be something in there that might be exculpatory that might not pop into the prosecutor or police officer's mind. 
their attorney might think of something. Presumably because they've had communications with their client and they might know something from their private communications the cops don't know. But then again, it depends how much Mr. Baldwin told the cops. Review of information from the search warrant will require analysis of data, communication, location services, or other materials specifically rated to the focus of the warrant. This review and analysis shall be conducted within a reasonable period of time. Reasonable is pretty elastic here, by the way. Again, any information obtained through this device unrelated will be sealed and later destroyed as soon as feasible after termination of any court proceedings. So not before then, which is, you know, definitely a good thing. And then it also says, based upon this, the uh, the cop requests the warrant, and then it is signed by Judge David Sierra, Segura, a magistrate judge in Santa Fe, who I think also probably had to think of it for all of about two-tenths of a second. So all those things. So we, we learned some valuable information. We learned, we learned much, much valuable information from this. We learned all kinds of new exciting things that we didn't know before. We learned about it passing through hands and the armor over here and checking the gun and then loading it with another round and, you know, putting in the safe so it was only her who touched it and she was the last person to handle it. She, she, she was on set because that was something else we thought she was offset, but no, apparently she was on set. Apparently she was on set. We all thought she was offset that day, but no, apparently not. Apparently she was on set the entire time. And she personally handled the gun and personally saw one of the cylinders wasn't loading and after checking it specifically loaded it and, you know, she was the only one who put ammo in it and put it in the safe and then did this procedure and she didn't check it very carefully by her own admission. And uh, yeah. So not looking particularly great for the armor over here. The assistant director's case, however, is looking more promising. It's a little bit harder to get to the assistant director now because we have the armor there. So I think the, I think the assistant, I think the assistant director might be in the clear. So I think, I think uh, armor friend has elevated their risk and thoughtfully decreased the risk to assistant director over here whose risk profile is looking much, much better. So if I'm their defense lawyer, I'm much happier. And then of course we have Mr. Baldwin over here who didn't check it. And, you know, given the years of training he's had and the rules of SAG of which he's a member and his v his vast knowledge of firearms, which he's gotten from every, every set he's ever been on and probably been shooting and other things and so forth and so on, you know, maybe he had a duty but then again he just saw it just checked by the armor so baldwin might be in the clear baldwin's case is looking better i wouldn't say he's out of the woods but it's looking better because the person who's supposed to be checking it is just there and just checked it just now so it's probably not negligent for him to rely on that having just seen it done it's obviously not optimal you know, from a gun safety perspective, of course you check it yourself. But from a legal liability perspective, it's harder. Not to say it's impossible. It's just harder. And all the rules and the SAG rules and things like that are increasing civil liability. But he already has civil, civil liability at the ass. So all those rules and the SAG guidelines are definitely getting this to negligence in the civil case. But, you know, just throw up the white flag, man. It's over in the civil case. But for criminal case... It's looking better from all Alec. So I think the game of musical chairs may be coming to a stop. And I think our winner of our game is going to wind up being the armorer. I, I think that is likely to be the winner of our game. And I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's probably more likely it's, it's, it's unlike it's unlikely at this point that I think based on what we know so far, but then again, we don't know everything because the cop himself said we didn't know everything, so he might have made other more interesting damning emissions. So there's that possibility. He already made more exciting damning emissions that we don't already know. Alec Baldwin might have made more exciting damning emissions. There's also his interview that he did with, uh, you know, uh, on, on, on ABC and any statements he's ever made inconsistent with any of that. And also those statements themselves give new grounds to look. And then, of course, there's the new and exciting... Photos, SMS, MMS, uh, GPS, 
and other related data from his phones. So Alec Baldwin, I don't think is out of the woods yet, but based on what we're seeing right at this moment, I have to say our, our, our horse, our, our horse to win the race is definitely the armor. So I hope you've enjoyed this race and uh, enjoyed this uh, discussion till later, my friends. Cheers and goodbye. Let me answer some of your super chats now, because that was a fun story. Oh, Cinema Queen doesn't have a wrench. Let me see if I can fix that. Let me see if I can add you. There was a whole while where people didn't have wrenches and they really did and stuff. So I don't know if that's a thing again, but let me see if I can find you and add you as a mod. And then I'll do some super chats. All right, talk amongst yourselves for a second, please, while I go try to fix this issue. Cinema Queen, if you're out there, I can't even see your chat. Are you blocked on the back end? Are you invisible? Oh, that's no good. Has anyone seen the Cinema Queen in chat? Is she being shadow banned? And if so, how? Let me check in the back end and see if she's been banned somehow. Let me take a look. Oh. I don't see you on the band list. Hmm. I don't see you on the bot band list and you're not on the mod list. Hmm. I'm confused. All right. Yeah, I can't. I can't see it. Um, Stephanie will take care of it on the back end. Thanks. Um, so let me move on to other subjects. Um, I, I just couldn't figure out what was going on here. Um, so let me move on and let's move into a new story so i adjust it in the back end so you don't have to see me adjust it so we can do that that's kind of nice Go away, man. It's close.
All right. For today's story, we talk about a student at the University of Southern California who was tasked with being a decluse, a the, the, the. For today's story, we talk about a graduate student at the University of Southern California who was tasked with being a diversity and inclusion specialist and said some very unfortunate things regarding Israel and people of Jewish descent. Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you will enjoy this legal education content, and today may be the day I earn your subscription. For today's story, we are covering something regarding a student senator and the University of Southern California who has said some unfortunate things. So for those of you not familiar with the concept, many colleges have a, have a student Senate and the students, the people who are elected, get to vote on various things that impact school policy. The degree to which they have influence, of course, depends from school to school. Uh, as a general matter, uh, one of the more common things that student senates do is decide how to allocate um, activity funds. So one of the things that students typically pay for in the United States is a set amount of a set amount that goes to um, external activities that goes to student enjoyment. And one of the things the student senate does typically is allocate how this money is going to be split between various student organizations that are seeking money. Um, of course, they have other roles depending, of course, on your school. But there was one student senator here, a graduate student, who decided to say that uh, that she wants to, uh, you know, kill all the Zionists. And, uh, you know, just for the YouTube record over here, of course, I'm not endorsing any of these statements and do not believe any of these things. I'm just covering it because I think that these people and their, their reprehensible rhetoric deserve to be covered. So, you know, let's go ahead and get started with all that. So a California inclusion student senator has been blasted for her kill Zionist tweets. High level of hypocrisy. One would imagine, uh, yeah, that's uh, definitely hypocritical. A student diversity and inclusion senator at the University of Southern California tweeted, again, not my thoughts, this woman's thoughts. I want, I'm having trouble even saying it because I don't want to say it. <sighs> I want to kill every mf -er Zionist in May, along with several other opinions that are being considered anti-Semitic. Well, I want to kill every Zionist is, is kind of anti-Semitic, yes. In May, Yashim Mashiki, a diversity and inclusion center for the University of Southern California, Vibitri Graduate Student Association said in now deleted tweet, I want to kill MEMF or Zionist. The Graduate Student Association's website is now down for maintenance, but previously listed her as a DII center. DII stands for Diversity, Equ Equity, and Inclusion. This girl had posted several other media comments and faculty that University of Southern California has found questionable. Other comments of hers include death to Israel and it's bitches the US. Uh-huh. She also goes on to write, if you're not for complete destruction of Israel and occupation forces, then you're anti-Palestine. She even voiced vo voice support for a terrorist, uh, ter the terrorist organization Hamas in May tweeting, yes, I effing love Hamas, now shut the fuck up. Zionists are going to effing pay, she tweeted. She's also doubled down on her tweets in a podcast by Palestine in America, saying she feels no obligation to apologize. I still don't feel any pressure to change any stances or apologize for anything at all. Wow. Um, Okay, uh, that's that's interesting. So she has absolutely no feelings of regret or feelings that, you know, she's made statements that, you know, were jokes or misunderstood or, you know, were said in a time of, you know, internal trouble or something. No, she just, uh, 
She just really thinks those things. And she's a diversity and inclusion specialist who says that if you don't want to eliminate the Jewish state, uh, that you're anti-Palestinian. Uh, that's, that's a lot. That, that's a lot. It's not surprising. It's not surprising because I, I think you do see on the whole quite a bit of anti-Jewish rhetoric from the left. Um, and it, you can think of Sanders, including Rashid Tlaib, who's just a blatant anti-Semite, who is a member of the House of Representatives and not the only one who has problems with Israel or Jewish people or things like that. So, you know, there's all that. Now, I will just say, you know, as a matter of law, that University of Southern California is a public college. So they are bound by the First Amendment. That may or may not extend to any groups that she's in. Um, I don't know what the Student Senate is or how it's constrained, but to the extent it's an arm of the school, it might be also bound by this. So, it, you know, this is this is all covered by free speech because this is opinions and beliefs and ideas. They're not false facts. They're not calls to action. You know, they're not true threats. They're not fighting words. They're disturbing. They're hateful. They're not worthy of expression, but as to the legal aspect, they're protected speech. And I think on that grounds, it's good that they're protected speech. You know, I think it's good that people should be allowed to express hateful things because now I know something that I wouldn't have known otherwise. She's a hateful person and someone that you shouldn't hang out with or be friends with. Someone not to, not to, she's someone who has reprehensible ideas. I've liked knowing that she has reprehensible ideas. It makes it easier not to hang out with her if it ever came up in the future. So, you know, there's all that stuff. So, yeah. Fox News has spoken with several University of Southern California students who believe it's hypocritical for a diversity senator in the student organization to make these types of statements. I don't like speaking in absolutes, but it seems like always the people who stand for inclusion that harbor the most hates in their hearts. There's something to that. Why students are being forced to go through virtual diversity training, DIA senators are tweeting about how they want to literally end the lives of humans who support the Jewish people. It's dark and severely twisted. I can't imagine how every Jewish person feels in the presence of this person. I'm imagining they don't feel great. It's not great when someone wants to call for, you know, your end, particularly given events that are raw and that are recent enough in history, they're still in living memory. They're still in living memory. Um, so, you know, there's, there's all that, um, this is a little bit off point, but th this was apparently a thing. So uh, the, the head of the EU, the president of the EU apparently said very recently that they believe in vaccine mandates and they believe in, um, you know, restricting people's movements about uh, regarding to vaccines and apparently Apparently, the president of the EU has said that it might be a good idea to get rid of the Nuremberg Code. The, the, the Nuremberg Code. The, the thing that we specifically wrote in Nuremberg, where, you know, there were some notable trials at the end of World War II, and, and we wrote this thing because of, of what the trials were about and so that maybe it wouldn't happen again. And apparently the president of the EU says, you know what's really not that great because it's hurting us with all the vaccine things we want to do? The Nuremberg Code. Let's get rid of that. Uh, that's just great. Just super, super great. <sighs> Wow, uh, let's press on before I get too much more depressed. The trials were mostly theater, so never, so many never saw punishment. I don't know about that. Some pretty notable people got hung at Nuremberg, so I, I don't know about that, man. Um, 
Davis suggested that if a student leader says that she wanted to kill every BLM student, there would be more action. Yeah, that's more in line with a call for action, right, than just our ideas. So if a student senator tweeted that they wanted to kill every BLM supporter, they would milk that headline for weeks. Yes, that's true. I apologize. I misread it. Let me do that again. As I misread it and I gave bad legal interpretation. Who is Davis exactly? I misread what I was trying to say. So Molly Davis, a student at University of Southern California, said that if the student had tweeted that she wanted to kill every BLM supporter, there would be more action. Saying that if a student senator in this department tweeted they wanted to kill every BLM supporter, the LA Times and Daily Trojan, that's the name of the school paper, would milk every headline for weeks and the campus would be swarmed with protesters. However, it's a different story with the Jewish people or anyone supporting the Jewish people are attacked. This is, this is a very, very fair point. If the statement is about MAGA people, if the statement's about Jewish people, like it's a very different reaction from people than if it's about the Jews or about the whites. No, that's said, I said that exactly wrong. Too wide sweeping to ban all non-consensual experimentation? Oof. I don't know about that one. I'd say it's not really something anyone should be saying, especially not someone in that position on our student road. It makes Jewish students uncomfortable, but we're used to it. If we do support Israel, we discuss it in private because we know it's heavily associated with the right politically and people don't have tolerance for that, especially at a liberal arts college. Lame. The student senator has doubled down, engaging in anti-Semitic Twitter frenzy. Her tweets, retweets, and likes include far, far right conspiracy theories, justification for murder of Israel tour guide Eli K, and multiple examples of dehumanizing Jews, likening Israelite, Israelites to the Nazis. It's a very, very strange comparison, and ha that every MF or Zionist supports genocide. N no, they, they, they really don't. N no. Someone in chat, someone in chat says, have you ever tried to argue against any action taken by the Israeli government? Um, I don't know, maybe. I can't think of anything obvious off the top of my head, but I, I'm sure from time to time I've disagreed with the Israeli government about something. Um, I disagree with my own government about things. I, I disagree with every government in the world about, probably about at one point or another about something they did. So I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but yeah, there's probably something I've disagreed with the Israel about. You know, I disagree with myself sometimes. So yes, I've argued against things and it's been fine and you know, you know, no problem. We can have a sophisticated debate about policy issues. It's, it's fine. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, Israel's apartheid. I think they're a long fucking way from apartheid. I, I don't agree with that opinion. Um, but that's just me. Calling Israel an apartheid state is a little bit like calling the is calling Vatican City an apartheid state or any other state that has formalized religious beliefs. There are, there are quite a few countries in this world that have formalized religious beliefs. So I don't think you can call, I don't think you can singular, singular, singular out Israel for being a Jewish state any more than you could single out Vatican C for being a Catholic state or single out other countries. You know, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, yeah. If you disagree with the Israeli government on any issue, you'd be labeled an anti-Semite? I don't think that's true. I think it just depends on what you're trying to say, you know, and to, it depends on what you're trying to say. As long as you're talking about the Jewish government and Jewish government policy, I think that's fine. You know, 
If you're calling for the destruction of the state of Israel, yeah, that's going to be a little bit different. But you know, yeah, that's that's going to be a problem. But if if you have if you believe in the Israeli state as a fundamental concept, but just have issues with things they're doing, then you know that's no different than any other country. So you know. Yeah, anti commie has it right. It's hard to be apartheid when the secondhand citizens are in the government with the same rights. This is true. Yeah, they they hold governmental positions, they hold governmental positions, and they have exactly the same rights. So a little bit high. So yeah. So University of Southern California has told Fox News the statements are disturbing but legally protected, which is true. They are legally protected. The individual is a member of a graduate student organization that self-organized, elects its own council, and does not set university policies. Okay, so they're not they're distinct from the school in this case. Fine. Even though the statements at issue are legally protected, we understand they're disturbing. We reject and condemn hate in all forms. You know, good for them. Good for them. I just hope they apply that policy to all hate speech, no matter where it comes from, but somehow I'm doubtful. So that current, so that, so that brings us to the end of discussion about this article. Yeah, again, not surprising that we're seeing this from people who believe in in, in equality and inclusion, even as they try to segregate people and bring about new Jim Crow, in the name of wokeness and stuff. But yeah, it's it's disturbing that's out there. Disturbing that there's people who think like this. And uh, yeah, and that brings us to the end of discussion of this case. Yeah. The United States does not recognize the United States does not recognize Palestine. I think Palestine is recognized by some countries in the world. But not the United States. Okay. Let's do all right. Let's do fun time. Let's do fun time. We're going to do the sovereign citizen stories now, guys. Yay! So I just need to get the layout right behind the scenes so that we can go and do that. Let me bring that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now let me change my audio. Yeah. Palestine is recognized by the UN? I doubt that. Um, but I wouldn't know for sure. I understand why a Jewish person would support Israel, but why would a non-Jew even care? That's a bit of a, that's a bit of a strange question. Um, it's a little bit asking. It's a little bit like asking why would I care about any other country in the world and what happens to it? Uh, I care about the United Kingdom, you know, because of our cultural ties. Care about Europe because of cultural ties. You know, care care about Japan cultural ties, care about Australia, what's happening to them, not so thrilled with the internment camps down there right now. So why would I care? I, I care about what happens in a lot of parts of the world. That's a slightly strange question. Why would I, why would I care about things that are outside of my borders? Uh, lots of reasons. <laughs> many, re many reasons. They gave them observer status, eh, whatever. Yeah, they're an, they're, 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 they're an ally of the United States. They've, they've 
close cultural ties with us. They're an important regional partner. These are just some of the many reasons why. Okay, great. There are no internment camps down here. Check your info. Well, I don't know what you're calling them in Aussie, but it rose by any other name, ma'am. For today's story, I slowly lose my mind as we review videos of sovereign citizens in court. Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you'll enjoy this legal education content, and today may be the day I earn your subscription. So, our mod, Stephanie, has chosen for me stories that I have not seen regarding sovereign citizens, and she desires to cause me pain. So, we're going to watch these stories of sovereign citizens. I'm going to slowly lose your mind. So you might want to know what a sovereign citizen is, and it's a bit hard to define, but basically it's a person who says, you're not the boss of me to the government, and then tries to come up with legal reasons why that's true. And the legal reasons hurt my brain so very, very much on every possible level. It's it's a little bit hard to unpack. The it's because because it's not exactly it's not exactly just normal stupid. It's sophisticated stupid. It's tr it's 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 educated stupid. These are people who have come up with very convoluted, very complex things uh, that are reminiscent of Kafka, or or something of that nature, where it's it's really it's it's complexity and, com and it's stupidity. The stupidity has been purposely designed in some ways. And so it's 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 hurtful to my mind. It's hurt it's hurtful to my brain and to my soul. But that's okay. Stephanie says it's a good thing for us to do. So <laughs> we'll give us a try and see how this goes. Okay, so we're we're gonna watch this video, which has been thoughtfully entitled Moorish Sovset versus Judge Jeffrey Middleton. Okay, fine. Mr. Morrow Bay, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, this is file 21213ST. It's entitled People versus Samuel R. Perdue, who refers to himself as Samir Siraj Morrow Bay. His mother named him Samuel R. Perdue. Uh, Mr. Perdue, you got another ticket for driving with a suspended license second offense that's a misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to a thousand dollars you're also charged with speeding i'm assuming you're going to plead not guilty to both of those no of course not i'm innocent and my name is not mr purdue so i would um, i would appreciate if you didn't call me mr purdue you know what i i as, as far as i'm concerned if he what if, if he wants to be called by a name that's like even vaguely reasonable I'd, I'd be happy to do that as a judge. I don't know what this judge is going to do, but like his legal name is one thing, right? So his legal name is the name that has to go on like the official documents and stuff. But if in court he wants to be referred to by some other name, as long as it's reasonable, I'd be inclined to say yes, you know? And he says, I am innocent, which of course is technically true, right? He's innocent until proven guilty. So he's, he's correct, although he does have to enter a plea. So guilty or not guilty are your two conventional options here, but... uh you know, so far it's not too insane. Uh, okay. Piss off the judge for you. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Mr. Morrow, okay. let me tell you this. Stop. Yeah, you're from some alternate universe where you don't have to obey the laws. Of no, the you don't respect the law, sir. Stop. If you drive again here in St. Joe County, I'm going to set right your butt at ten thousand dollars. And uh, also. I'm, I'm gonna lie to you. Do you see this? Are you looking? So we uh, have a driver's license to get, a, um, get this license. I don't want it, but as you can see, your officer is a liar. So he might have the physical license, but he's driving with a suspended license. So, you know, he might have the physical license and also it could have been acquired after the date. 
So it may not be legally valid at this moment for the purpose of driving. So that doesn't really answer the question. Well, what's the name on that? Is that Sandra Perdue or Mr. Morrow Bay? Well, um, I'm forced to do this. Anything I do with y'all is under threat, duress, and coercion. So, so you um, have, you every have... time I... That's kind of true. I mean, this is this is this is the nature of the state. This is the nature of the state. Thank you for stating something, you know, fairly obvious. Everything I do with y'all is under the nature of a threat or or coercion. Right. That that's what yeah, the government has rules and laws. It and are and they've been voted for and put in place and the government uses force and coercion to get you to do those things. Uh yes. Correct. Right. Okay. Moving on. I travel. Clearly, all right. You have your uh, commercial mercenaries. Keep pulling me over. You have you have a driver's license because your, your your commercial mercenaries continue to pull me over and they won't leave me alone. Commercial mercenaries, the police officers. Uh, a a commercial mercenary. Who are they? Who are they of? Merc mercenaries of what? Uh, okay. Well, stop driving. At least stay uh, out don't of the Don't drive. I travel. Oh, please. No, no, no. No, no, not this. Not this. Not like this. I don't drive. I travel. Oh. Oh, no. All right. Traveling is one thing. Driving is another. You can travel all you want. All right. But let me let me make this I, that's clear. That's what I'm doing. And they won't so, let me travel. They won't let me travel on my own land. And you're violating your... On your own land? On your own land? You don't need a license to drive on your own land. You can drive on your own land. What, what are you talking about? You're violating the law and you know it. Violating the law. <laughs> well, one of us is uh, <laughs> violating the law, and anybody who needs to know anything about now, the law, slow down, talk about slow it. down for a minute. Um, do you, that license you held up is it a valid Michigan driver's license? Is it a valid Michigan driver's license? Oh uh, well, I was forced to go to the to um your Secretary of State because you guys won't let me travel on my own land. If it's his land, you don't need a license. You can drive without a license on your own land. You don't need a license to drive on your own land. It's fine. That's as valid as it is. What's really valid is my nationality yeah. that you keep denying. So you're denying me due process and you know it. What is your nationality? A nationality of one? I mean, the United States does not, yeah, I'm. we're not recognizing your nationality, right? Correct, sir. Uh, the United States. See, one of the things states get to do, one of the things states get to do is like recognize or not recognize other states. The United States can just recognize and not recognize states on a, basically on a whim. It's one of the things that we can do. It's one of the things every country can do, incidentally, is like determine who are, who are and who are not countries. So you might consider yourself a country, but the United States doesn't recognize you as a country. So you're not a country. So if you want to if you want to contest that conclusion, uh, you know, you get your army and we'll get ours and, you know, yeah. Well, you haven't been convicted of anything yet. I'm just telling you, if you continue to keep driving on some cockamamie thing, drive. you're well, you're behind the wheel of a car. Give me this BS about traveling versus driving. I'm just telling you right now, you heard it here. If you drive again in St. Joseph County and you get another ticket, I'm going to set a very high bond. You can sit in jail for 28 days until we sort this out. You're presumed to be innocent of the charges that you're charged with, and you've exercised your constitutional right to plead not guilty. No, I didn't plead not guilty. You <laughs> said that. I said I'm innocent. Well, I, as a judge, am going to enter a not guilty verdict for you because I can. Right? I can't enter a guilty verdict for you, obviously. But I'm, you know, I'm just skipping this step and like, okay, you, you've not, you've not pleaded fine. I'm pleading for you. It's not guilty. Congratulations. You're not guilty now. If you'd like to change that to guilty though at any time, please let me know. Innocent. All right. 
Fair enough. We'll set this for a last pre-trial. Are you still at 312 North Sage Street, apartment 302? North America is my domicile. You can send whatever information. North America is his domicile? North America? Well, okay, now I'm, I'm so confused on, I'm confused on technical levels now. I don't understand. I don't understand. What, wait a second. I'm, I'm just hopelessly confused. All of North America is his domicile? This would include Mexico and Canada. Is he claiming they don't exist either? Is, is Canada and Mexico not a thing in his territory, in his world? They don't have power over him either? And if, if not Canada and Mexico, then like, why not all the countries? Why do any of them, do any of the countries exist? Do any of them exist? Or is it just the America thing? Why, why are you not a sovereign citizen from all the countries? If you say that you're not a sovereign citizen from all the countries, because only the United States has the UCC, I will hang my head in shame and then go and drink until I forgot you told me that. You want to that to that address? That is fine. All right. Very smart. So any judge who does not comply with this oath of office to the Constitution of the United States wars against the Constitution and engages in. <sighs> okay. Okay, let me just stop you right there, boss. Yes, I've taken an oath of office. The oath of office requires me to uphold the United States Constitution and the state's constitution. Uh, neither of those things recognize your independent sovereign ass. So I'm not violating my oath to the United States or the state of whatever by refusing to acknowledge your sovereignty because the United States government says you don't, your, your sovereignty doesn't exist. So actually, if I did acknowledge you, I'd actually be violating my oath. It's exactly contra, it's exactly backwards. If I did recognize your independent sovereignty, then I would actually be betraying my oath because I'd be saying that you are an independent country, even though the United States says you aren't, and they're the ones who get to recognize countries. So, there's that. All right, I'm gonna mute your microphone. I don't want to hear this crazy. Uh, <laughs> Please, Mike, nice. The benefits of the I'm benefits of. I'm uh, you for a last pretrial. We'll pick a date, and I'll send it to you in the mail. I don't expect that'll settle the case. You already have I never thought of that as a benefit of Zoom that you can just put the defendant on mute, which incidentally doesn't violate his rights because if you're in a formal courtroom, you can only speak when you have turns. There's like procedures. So it doesn't violate his rights. He's there. He gets to still see and everything. He just can't talk, which is, you know, not a right that he has. So I would get to put you on mute. All court things by, by Zoom so I can mute your ass when I get tired of hearing of you. One case set for a jury trial We'll probably set both of these for a jury trial. Who is this guy, Lauren? He looks like he's in a car. I will give you credit. On the bottom you always left. log in in a timely manner, which I appreciate. I'll give you a new notice. It'll be on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, we're going to skip the regular pretrial and just go right to the last pretrial. I expect this to be set for a jury trial. All I'm telling you is. Who who is hoodie guy here in the bottom left, with the with the looking like he's coming from Viva's office? Who's this guy? Stop driving. <coughs> Stop. St. <coughs> County. All right, sir, you're good to go. Okay. Well, that was that was that was number one. That was number one of the series, and it wasn't really. It was it defense counsel. It could be defense counsel. That'd be hilarious. Um. But I don't know, yeah, who is this guy? But yeah, so that wasn't that wasn't too stupid, but um you know, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. We have 
we have more. We've got more citizen arrested for contempt by Judge Middleton. Yeah, okay. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Remember this encounter between Judge Middleton and Samir Siraj Mauro Bay in St. Joseph County, Michigan, about six months ago? Uh, Mr. Perdue, you got another ticket for driving with a suspended license, second offense. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. You're also charged with speeding. I'm assuming you're going to plead not guilty to both of those? No, no, of course not. I'm innocent, and my name is not Mr. Produce. Three weeks ago, I'm totally unprepared to represent himself. Judge Middleton is... Well, they are back for another bout. But Mr. Bay is late for his trial. But even worse than that, he turns up late with three bench warrants for failing to appear for his last pre-trial hearing three weeks ago and totally unprepared to represent himself. Judge Middleton is not happy. Uh, Deborah Davis is here from the prosecutor's office. Uh, Samuel R. Perdue, who also is known as Samir Morrow Bay, is here today. Um, he has three separate driving suspended charges that were scheduled for jury trial. File 213ST alleges driving suspended second offense on January 31st, 2021 here in St. Joseph County. File 202073 alleges driving suspended on September 17th here in St. Joseph County. I think there may be a speeding charge with that. File 202653 also charges driving suspended second offense and forgery and speeding. All of those matters were scheduled for jury trial today, November 10th. Uh, Mr. Morrow Bay wishes to represent himself on these matters. He has a perspective on the Michigan Motor Vehicle Code that disagrees with the state's version of it, but... This guy can't even turn up for his own pre-trial, and he's late for this trial. So I don't think any of his debunked... i just like to note as a, as a matter of law that I, as a judge, don't have to let you make any defense that is not legally competent. You, you can't you can't just argue anything you want to the jury. You can only argue things that are legally competent. I am a special sovereign citizen. Well, I get, might let you talk to that to the jury because they'll see what an idiot you are. But you know, strictly speaking, I can prevent you from making any defense that is not recognizable in law. So you know you you say the first sovereign citizen thing. I it's be like shut up. You can't offer that defense. Try again. You're denying me my rights. No, I'm really not. You have to like you know argue law things and that wasn't one of them try again <sighs> but you know okay legal theories will be getting any kind of airing today just a hunch uh, he didn't want an attorney and didn't wish to uh, uh, have representation he wanted to represent himself in all these matters so we treated him like an attorney we set the matter for a final pretrial to prepare for jury trial. And he didn't show up. So there are presently three arrest warrants for Mr. Morrow Bay's arrest for failing to appear for duly scheduled last pretrials about three weeks ago. Uh, we don't show up on the morning of trial with a basket full of papers and inconvenience 30 to 50 jurors who have to come in and hear your case and several witnesses without yeah this is this is one of the reasons pre-trial exists for exactly this reasons all right this is one of the reasons pre-trial exists like why do we have trial before the trial to determine like what witnesses will be called 
who can testify because, you know, who's a valid witness, who's relevant, what defenses you can argue, you know, what defenses are legally competent, you know, what you might be allowed to argue, what you can't argue, what you can't argue, right? So all those decisions are made before the trial so that everyone's clear. It's like, so yeah, we, we want to bring you into a trial without doing any of the preliminaries. Uh, it sounds like a bad plan, dude. It sounds like a very, very bad plan. Preparing for it. So we scheduled a pretrial conference and you didn't show up. So I've called off the jurors for today and the prosecutor has called off all the witnesses. And there are currently three separate warrants for your arrest for failing to appear. But you're here now. Judge Middleton has given this guy so many chances over the last few months and has treated him really well, but we all saw this coming a mile off with how disrespectful he was in previous hearings. Judge Middleton is a fair judge, but this guy is pushing his luck. I think I was on the order. We <laughs> sent that to the eyes, address that you gave us. Poor prosecutor. And if you're representing yourself, you need to act like you're representing yourself. We sent you duly notice to your Sage Street address in Kalamazoo. Uh, the same notice you got for this. I don't, I don't live there anymore, and I, and I can't represent myself. I am myself. All right. Well, well that I'm is technically. I mean, he is, he is, he is actually very technically right. Um, so I guess we'll give him a point for being hyper correct. I, I mean, strictly speaking, it is incorrect to say you're representing yourself. It is, it is correct to say you're re you are yourself. So, you know, uh, I guess, I guess, point for super technically correct, but uh, you know. You, if you make this correction to a judge, you're a fucking idiot. Everyone knows what we're talking about. Don't get smart. I don't know that you moved. So, um, Mr. McNair, you're driving me crazy. I'm going to put you in the waiting room. You're walking all over the place and flashing the screen and giving me vertigo and you're sideways and upside oh, down. Mr. McNair is the one that's walking around. Mr. McNair is the one that's walking around. Oh, holy shit. I thought I, I, okay. That, okay. Wow. Um, so he's trying to do, he's trying to do his court hearing while walking around in the parking lot of like a Walmart or something. Uh, okay. Um, so I'll be with you in a bit. Don't go away. <laughs> it uh, just puts him off the call. <laughs> yes, that's your position. Then you're not doing a very good job of it because you didn't tell me where you lived. You didn't show up for a pretrial where we prepare for this. And uh, now you come rolling in with a hat on the morning that you're. 30 or 40 jurors are supposed to be here. That's not a very good way to do business. Wow. Uh, it's my religious headdress. I'm a Moorish American national. Oh, okay. It wasn't him. He's it, okay. So it's a religious headdress. Uh, okay. Let's go with that. Yes. I, I recall. Well, that looks like a plain old woolly hat to me, but what do I know? Oh, and is that your fake Moorish driver's license there? I can see because that won't help you now or in the future because it's not a state issued driver's license. Um, all right. This jurisdiction to begin with. Miss Davis is here. I'm still Ms. waiting for jurisdiction. Miss Davis is regretting every choice that's brought her up to this point in life right about now and I feel her pain. For the prosecutor's office. Miss Davis, do you have any thought on this? Your Honor, I would ask that he be held in contempt for failing to appear at the last pretrial. I would also ask that an order enter regarding discovery if all of these items that he's holding on to are intended to be used as exhibits at the trial. Uh, I would like to have copies of those so that we can uh, be prepared. Also, I'd like to have our motion for joinder of the cases heard so we can uh, settle that matter uh, prior to choosing the jury and having another date set. Okay, those are all very reasonable. Like, you know, contempt for not appearing. I want to know what he's holding up so I can, you know, look into it and stuff. And I want all the cases that are currently pending consolidated to save everyone time. You know, okay, fair, fair enough. 
right in the middle of my busy arraignment morning when I have 14 people waiting to be arraigned. And that probably think... didn't work out too good. Uh, if but we it's all on, it's all on yeah, address. we didn't show up. He also got notice of your motion. Mr. Maro Bay, do you have documents that you were gonna present as part of your defense? I mean, um, I, I, um, I mailed in documents and I never got a response. Well, a real lawyer would know to follow up on stuff like that to make sure that you are ready for your trial, but you can't even be bothered to turn up for your hearings. So expect what's coming to you, I guess. I well, did you have some, do you have some you wish to present? Well, I mailed in an affidavit to you more than once, and this is also my. Oh, this is an affidavit of why he can't be uh, can't be held back. Yeah, the court's not going to respond to that. Uh, you know, the court's not going to respond to your affidavit that you filed, saying I can't be brought before your court. The court, at best, will put it on the record, which they really should do, but they might not just because they can't even bother to do that. But yeah, they're definitely not going to respond to your random f things that you sent in. N that's not a thing that's going to happen. And the reason is because it's, yeah, you, it's, it's legally incompetent and we can't be bothered to care. My um, legal notice for my lawful name change, because I, I put it on the record that I'm a Moorish American national and I'm not an American uh, or, or a U.S. citizen, excuse me. You're not a U.S. I'm citizen? Native I'm native to the land. Uh huh. So, um, so You're a U.S. citizen. Rules, Congratulations. Uh, uh, he says he's not a. He says he's not a U.S. citizen, but he's native to the land. Unless you've gone through the trouble of going to a foreign embassy and formally renouncing your citizenship, but you're here, so that didn't happen. You're a U.S. citizen. Congratulations. Um, that the state of Michigan is uh, creating does not is not applicable to me. It's very applicable. And I was trying to be respectful right. to the court and let the court know since the beginning in a respectful manner. <laughs> I guess that's a no then, you don't have anything to present. What a surprise. And it looks like Judge Middleton has heard enough. And I have lots of documentation to prove it. All right. Security. Uh, I want you to take Mr. Perdue into custody. Okay. Uh, we're gonna execute the three bench warrants that are currently out for his arrest for contempt. We'll take him to jail and we'll make an arrangement later to discuss the arrest. Are you arresting me right now? Yeah, that would be the right. th <laughs> Yes, that would be the thing that he just said. Yes, I'm, I want you to take him into custody for the for the warrants. Are you arresting me right now? Yes. Yes, I am. Time to do it now. Bye. Bye. Mr. Perdue, you're going to jail, St. Joe County Jail, here in St. Joe County, and I'm going to hold on to you in lieu of three $1,000 bonds until we can review your contempt and uh, the other things we need to deal with. But if you're going to represent yourself, you need to do it right. You need to show up when you're supposed to show up. You need to follow the rules of evidence and procedure. You don't just come in and say, I'm my own country. Attorney TJ over here is like, yeah, you know, you know, Attorney TJ is not having a great day. <laughs> I'm going to do what I want. So you're going to jail. I was unaware. The bond is $3,000 per file, and I will talk with you later. So uh, right now you're going to the St. Joe County Jail. Rest him. Rest the idiot. Bye. All right. Thank we'll you, deal with him, Deborah, when we have more time. Prosecutor says, thank your honor. It's like, yeah, I'm with you on this one, prosecutor. I, I, I feel you. I feel you on levels. I'm, I'm right there with you on this one. Uh, uh, I, I, if I was a judge in this situation, I probably would pull that contempt trigger real fast, real fast for the sovereign citizens. It's like you're not the boss of me. Contempt. I'm sovereign. Contempt. I'm, I'm a man of the land. Contempt. I can keep going. <laughs> don't 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 do that but uh he's clearly in contempt and uh he is his own person so he isn't representing himself he is himself we'll see if we can sort that out play stupid games win stupid prizes i guess this arrest has actually been on the cards for the last six months or so Judge Middleton did warn him numerous times that this would happen, but at least he's off the road. Well, for now at least. 
right, that's it for another video. Thank I, I, I don't know how much it would help, but I, th I, feel, I think with these sovereign citizens, I feel like you got to whack them over the head at least a little to let them know it's real. I'm not saying we have to be particularly vindictive about it, but, you know, they come in saying, you're not the boss of me, uh, you can't do anything to me. It's like, I want to put you in jail overnight just as a teaching tool at that point, which I can do because you're, you're, you're wasting my time. Stop wasting my time. Stop it. You know, you can't, you can't come to me with the stupid, you know, it's, it's, it's not happening, but alas, my friends, there is yet more, there is more things. This one is entitled, is this the same one that we just saw or is it different? Hold on. Let me reopen that tab. Uh, it's it's different video. No, it's the same video. It's the same video twice. So I might have re I'm opened the wrong thing. Let me take a quick look and see if there is a different video because I thought Stephanie sent me three. Sure, it looks like she did. Copy that. Try that. Put that here. I am now even more confused than when I started. I think the sovereign citizen has rotted my brain. Oh, there was a part two that we missed. So we, we went to the we went to the arrest. We went to the arrest and we didn't actually do the part two video. I'm sorry. We skipped we skipped the sequence. That was my fault. We skipped sequence. There was a part two video that I that I missed. But that's okay. We can fix that now and we can clean it up in the edit. So uh, let's do that. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I'll call you by your preferred name, Mr. Morrow Bay. Uh, this is Judge Middleton. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. All right. We're waiting just a bit for the prosecutor to log in. Understood. He was with us just a bit ago. He should be right back. Mr. Purdue, we are live, well, even though we're not doing anything here. We're live on YouTube and live on the uh, Zoom platform. As soon as Casey Johnson from Prosecutor comes in, we'll conduct our business. That's not my name. Well, I know you, you're known to the Secretary of State by your birth name, but you prefer to be known as Samir Siraj Morrow Bay. And, uh, I'm a national of Atlanta. You're a national of Atlanta? Do you see Atlanta? But I thought, did you take an oath to this? Atlanta. Bay. And, uh, I'm a national of Atlanta. I think there's a land. He's a national of the land. That's not a thing. The United States does not recognize the national of the land. We, we do not recognize that. I understand. my nationality. That's not a nationality but we recognize. Thought, did you take an oath to this? I took an oath to the United no, States, yeah, the not to the land. Yeah, to uphold the Constitution. Yes, the yes. Constitution does not recognize the you. Treaties. There is no treaty I don't regarding know about this. Treaties. Those are federal. This is state law. I know, I know. This is. I should even be here. It's this. I should be somewhere federal. I should be in a federal courtroom, and you still haven't provided um, any um, delegation of authority order. Well. Okay, um, there is no delegation of authority order from the United States to the state of Missouri. Uh, kind of actually the exact opposite way around, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, there's no delegation of authority letter from the United States to Missouri. <laughs> there is a delegation of authority letter from, from Pennsylvania and Delaware, and North Carolina, South Carolina, and 
some, several other states. Yeah, this is called the Constitution of the United States. That's the delegation letter. It's kind of the exact opposite way around on that one. Uh, okay, uh, fine. Wait, wait a minute till the prosecutor gets here and you can go through. You've said this stuff on each previous case. I know, and I'm still waiting for my delegation of authority order. I, I'm still waiting. I never You're not going to get email. it. That's Article 3, Section 2. You took okay, let, let me look up Article 3, Section 2. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm looking at provisions of the Constitution at this point, but apparently that's a thing I'm doing. So let me look up. Of the, yeah, let me look up Article 3, Section 2. Article 3 deals with courts, by the way. So it's something dealing with the courts. Okay. Oh, Lord. Please help me. Please. Please help me. Article 3, Section 2. The, yeah. The judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under this Constitution, which cases arising under this Constitution, not the Constitution of Missouri, the laws of the United States and treaties made such which shall be made, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the judicial power, it does not come from any of those things, sir. The judicial power is not arising under this constitution. The judicial power, again, the judicial power of each of the sovereign states precedes, precedes the judicial authority of the United States. The judicial authority of the states existed first and then they collectively you see what they did is they collectively each of the states you know what they did they got in a room and they said hey what if our like states were united and stuff and we had a we had a national government too that could have laws and that's the what article 3 section 2 is talking about not talking about Missouri go to this you know it yeah I should well, be here you could fix that you could stop yeah why, why don't you why don't you try why don't you try to get a remand I forgot to switch the transition back while they were talking sorry about that uh, and why don't you try filing something with the federal court? See how well that goes out for you. That should be fun. Why don't you file like a writ of mandamus or something or with the federal court and say, hey, federal court, I shouldn't be here. I should be over with you guys. See how well that goes for you. That might be fun. Driving a damn car and then you wouldn't keep coming here and you wouldn't have to deal it's with Michigan. It's Michigan, not what I said. Okay, well, fine. It's same analysis, fine. Deal with you, which is but a driver. Um, but isn't isn't driving a commercial terminology? No, no, no. In your universe, no. In your universe, maybe it is, but in this no, one, driving is not a commercial uh, term. So no. about Michigan Motor Vehicle Code. So that, what about Black's Law Dictionary? What about Black's Law Dictionary? Black's Law Dictionary is a dictionary. It is not the law. It's a summary of legal concepts. It is not in and of itself law. It's just a book that was written by a guy called Black. He wrote a book trying to like summarize concepts. It's pretty good, incidentally. But it's not, you know, the law. Uh, Does that not well, count? as far as I know, that doesn't control Michigan traffic legislation. Yeah. As far as I know, um, you can't make up rules. Um, 
to undermine the Constitution. And, and no matter what rules or codes you make up, it, it doesn't supersede the law. There is no level of irony deep enough. There is no level of irony deep enough for what he just said. There's no level of irony deep enough for what he just said. He just said, as far as I know, you can't make up laws or code that challenge the authority or subvert the authority of the Constitution of the United States. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's true. Uh, that's true. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's you. Uh, uh, okay. Here comes Mr. Johnson. I don't disagree with that. One of us keeps making up rules, but I don't think it's me. Oh, uh, uh, I mean, Mr. I, Johnson? I'm pretty sure it is. All right, well, let me call the case. This is file 21213ST. The actual title on the ticket is People versus Samuel Rufus Perdue. The defendant is here. He prefers to I'm be not. known as Samir Siraj Maro Bay. I don't think he ever lawfully changed his name, but he goes by that name and he has every time he's been here. He's charged once again with driving suspended second offense. It's alleged that on or about uh, January 31st, he was operating a vehicle here in St. Joseph County while his license was suspended. Uh, he also got a ticket for speeding, so he tends to go too fast, always doesn't have insurance, and he doesn't have a license. He has two previous cases already pending. File 202073 is a driving suspended charge from September 17th. He liked that one so much, he got another one on November 25th. I think one or both of those cases he was speeding. That's file 202653. Mr. Morrow Bay has a different view of the law. He wants to represent himself, which I've allowed, and we had agreed to set That's those two earlier cases for jury trial. As we discussed earlier, sir, I can't do I can't a jury trial. He's me? technically correct. I said, I'm sorry, I can't represent myself. I well, am that's who what, I am. All right, but you don't wish to have a lawyer, is that correct? Oh, no, I don't need one. Okay, right. great. Then well, you're proceeding now you have your third driving suspended charge, and I told you the last time, if you did another one of these, I was going to set a bond, but I'm not going to. Let me tell you this right now. Now, I do not like this at all. I have to say this, I do not like this at all. If you're going to make threats, you know, barring special circumstances. So, you know, you can show mercy if there's special special cause. But if you're going to say something, barring cause, you should go through on the threat, right? Otherwise, the threat is meaningless. So Judge Jeffrey over here is way too nice. He said, if you do this again, I'm going to set a bond. And he just said, well, you did it again. I'm not going to do that. Not because I have some special reason not to, you know, because of extenuating circumstances. I'm just not feeling it. Judge, Judge Jeffrey's a little soft over here. I'm just saying. If, if he, if he, if he, you know, if you're going to say stuff, you got to follow through, man. I'm Unless you realize that you're just plain wrong. So you could obviously say, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have said that in the first place, but I don't think that's the case. I'm a traveler, drive... not a driver. For yes. the record. If, We're all for the record, record yes, you are. In this universe. Um, at any rate, you haven't been convicted of anything. You've been accused three times, but you do Plus not have... I hadn't even I hadn't even thought about the fact that he is sitting in his car for a put a driver's license. I mean the car isn't moving, but still there's something there. Lawful authority to drive in Michigan. If you drive again in St. Joe County, I'm going to set a bond and you'll either post it or sit in jail while we await the ability to try your case. I can only leave you in jail for 28 days. But am I understanding once again, sir, you wish to have a jury trial on this matter? For my national peers, because I'm a national of the land, and you still haven't proven jurisdiction. I challenged jurisdiction um, a long time ago, and it's never been proven, and I'm still waiting. All right. I had that discussion with a guy that was in jail once. I said, well, you're in jail. I guess you're in my jurisdiction. Let me tell you this. My jurisdiction is St. Joe County, and stop driving in it. Um, I don't drive. 
I, I'm a traveler no. by law. You and know, I've already sent you paperwork and you never responded. Well, because I'm not required to respond to it. You've got a skewed view of things. If this was this easy, everybody would declare themselves their own country and everybody could do whatever they wanted to. So no, this the rules, is only, rules only apply to you. Um, no. The rest of us suckers are stuck complying with the law. So let's just figure out who the witnesses are, and we'll also set this for, for the land. jury. For the land. Casey, who have you got for witnesses? I'm just a second judge. I'm sorry. 21. I had his other files open. Um, only here special appearance, only because I have to, because if I don't be here, you know, you, you're going to see your criminals that come now, get special me appearance here, is, so. special appearance is a thing. It's a thing in, in civil law context. Not so much the criminal law context, but special appearance is a thing. So I might as well teach you something of value for your legal education, right? As long as I might get something of value out of this experience. So special appearances are a thing. They're used in civil cases when you're contesting jurisdiction, right? So you're contesting jurisdiction, but you have to file things in the court to contest jurisdiction, right? So you're kind of in this catch-22 situation where, you know, I, I, I don't want to file things in the court because I think I'm not subject to your jurisdiction. But if I file things in the court to contest that, then I'm basically conceding to your jurisdiction, right, by the very act of me filing things saying I'm not. So the, the law, um, you know, got around the snake eating its own tail thing uh, quite a long, to, a long time ago, and we call it a special appearance, right? I'm coming in only for the purposes of contesting the jurisdiction, right? So I'm not really here. You know, I might be physically here in person. I, I might be physically here and I might be filing things in your court, but I'm not really here. Uh, I'm only I'm, I'm in this, this this zone where I'm only here for this limited purpose. And then once we deal with the jurisdiction issue and resolve that, then, you know, obviously we've resolved that. The reason that there's not a thing in criminal law is because you don't have that problem with jurisdiction because you have jurisdiction because the crime was happened in that place. Right, so you're not having that problem where like, oh, maybe we're maybe we should sue him here, or maybe we should sue him here, or maybe we should sue him here. It's like, no, we're bringing the case here because that's the only place to bring the case because that's where it happened. So he's using a concept that kind of exists in law, but you know, incorrectly. But what else is new? So I'm only here under threat, duress, and coercion. Well, just to and put you're that out sitting, there. you're sitting in the driver's seat of your car. Now I'm letting you wear your headgear because I think it's part of your beliefs. So I'm not going to push it, but you're sitting in the damn driver's seat. Uh, what's the, uh, the witnesses? Uh, Jesse Raymond, Your Honor. That's it. Oh, the police, the, the, the so-called police officer who pulled me over is a witness also? And a certified driving record. Is, isn't that a conflict of interest right there? No. What? The they don't work for the court. He doesn't What's work the for the court. The court's in the judicial branch. He's in the executive branch. What's the conflict? Right I, I didn't even catch it. That's it. Oh, the police, the, the, the so-called police officer who pulled me over is a witness also? And a certified driving record. Yeah. Is, isn't that a conflict of interest right there? No. Why? They don't they work for the court. He doesn't work for the court. The court's in the judicial branch. He's in the executive branch. Plus, you keep driving too fast. So you're a traveler. Drive. You, get, you get to travel whatever speed you feel like. You don't have to have insurance. And um, you can do what I'm you an, want. So it's a one witness case. It's a one witness case, right? Which, you know, for this, why not, right? I can get everything I need from the officer. The only thing that I need otherwise is like his driving record, which he can, he can get from the police officer too. It's like, it's just introduce it. As a as a fact, so it's like yeah, that's I, it's a one witness case. I just need the officer. That's it. It's like oh, is that a conflict of interest? How would that even be a conflict of interest? How does that even make sense? He's he's a witness against you. Uh, okay. All right. Well, anyway, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna set this on the jury list with the other two cases. And let me say this again: if you drive again and you get another citation, I'm gonna set a one thousand dollar cash bond. And you can sit in jail. So my strong so advice you, is to stay out of St. Joseph County. So you do realize drive. you're already you driving do. there. So I'm gonna mute your microphone, and you uh, I'll so set this for, for a uh, jury trial. <laughs> the mute button is a godsend to judges. I swear. Um, all right. That Did you disconnect? Yeah. Uh,
convert a liberty oh, he, to he, he, he unjoined and rejoined so his mic would come back on <laughs> that's a such a dick move that's contempt by the way it's like yeah i i said i'm putting you on mute on mute and you joined and rejoined just so i can get your mic off that's contempt man i tell you what if judge if judge uncivil becomes ever if judge uncivil ever becomes a thing judge uncivil is going to be really unfriendly to people who dick around in my courtroom you know let's 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 not do that you know, we're all here. We're all professionals. There are rules. We're following the rules, people. I am God. I am uncivil. <laughs> Privilege license it and attach a fee to it, right? You Something. do know that, right? I don't make the law. I just didn't try to apply it. All right. Uh, we'll set Stat this for a jury trial uh, the next day. Your statutes and your codes are all not right. the law. Officer. The codes are, in fact, the law. They mean the same thing. It has no end. We could, if we lived to be 112, we could continue to have this argument. He wants a jury trial. He's entitled to have one, and we'll get there when we can get there. All right. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, I'll be with you in just a moment. <laughs> He's back. Is he going to keep Perdue, trying to join us? Let's go. We'll set this for jury trial with your My name is Samir Bey. I thought I already told you that. Sometime, yeah, you told oh, me. Oh man. That. Right. Oh my God. I, I, this guy would be in contempt in my courtroom. He would have been contempt long ago. He would have been contempt long ago. I'm not. I'm not taking this shit. I have worked too hard in my life. I have worked too hard in my life, and I have too much education to deal with this crap. I'm here to actually like decide law. And whatever this bullshit is, is not law. You are you are in my courtroom and you are completely wasting my time. And you are doing it deliberately. This shit would not fly. It's like, we're gonna, we're gonna put you in contempt and we'll try again tomorrow. We'll put you in contempt and we'll try again tomorrow. Maybe if we do it enough days in a row, you know, you'll get the hint. And if the one day at a time doesn't work, maybe we'll try two days at a time. And then three and four and five. And, you know, I can just keep coming up with numbers until, you know, you actually stop being a complete ass. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll be in You don't touch. respect the law. You're a criminal. <laughs> well, one of us is. Woo. Code means different than law, two different words. Well, they're two different laws, but they mean basically the same thing. Um, yeah, so this is a story of a sovereign citizen who uh, is an idiot and deserves to be in jail and deserves to be whacked over the head of with a, with a hammer of justice. So uh, all that stuff. So this is just a whole pile of stupid, nothing particularly surprising, but um, yeah. So that brings us to the end discussion of this case. Okay. I mean, you could tech, you could have a law that isn't in the code, so it's different that way. You can't have law that's not in the code because you have common law, for example, and things like that. So you can't have law that's not in the code, but they kind of use them interchangeably, but whatever. For today's story, we respond to the account, Bad Legal Takes. Hi everyone and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you'll enjoy this legal education content and today may be the day I earn your subscription. So this is something I've been thinking about doing for a while and Attorney Tom beat me to it in terms of actually doing it. So it now looks like I'm copying him, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. So um, yeah, there's this account on Twitter called Bad Legal Takes and as the name somewhat implies, it is a resource of all the best bad legal takes 
on the Twitter. So I thought we could review some of them together and we could comment at the stupid. So that would be good. So let's just go ahead and start doing that. Um, the, the top tweet and the pinned tweet on this account is from Eagles three to two because it's the Jets who said in February of 2019, Avenatti referring to Michael Avenatti might be the best lawyer in US history. Well, that didn't age well. The Fifth Amendment literally says you have you have committed a crime and you're not going to answer. Someone says that's not even slightly true. And then he says, you're refusing to answer on the grounds that may incriminate you. If you tell the truth, nothing will incriminate you. Fact. If you refuse, you know your answer will incriminate you because you are a lying criminal fact. No. Uh, the Fifth Amendment is the thing that protects us all because you don't know what will incriminate you and you don't have to, you're not admitting to a crime by taking the fifth and that's just dumb. From Eric Larson, isn't pleading the fifth and admission of guilt? No. You're literally saying that if you talk that you would incriminate yourself. Well, technically speaking, it would tend to incriminate you is more precise. By pleading the fifth, you're admitting that you did something wrong. No, you just realized that the state has all the power and why give them any ammo? No. Morning team justice. So Roger Stone pleads the fifth, then lies to the camera saying he's done nothing wrong, which if true, would mean he has no lawful basis to plead the fifth. No. At this point, the only thing Roger Stone contributes to any discussion is carbon dioxide. No, that's not what pleading the fifth means, no. Oh, the irony, imagining showing your Vax pass to see the Matrix, in my opinion, told about being a being F in P NPC. There's some validity to that, you know, as an idea. And then Michael Leardman here over with the bad legal advice, a clear violation of HIPAA law, no. And anyone else that sees medical information of mine should be prepared to sue for violation of HIPAA. And then he comments, uh, then Hangry Hangry HIPAA says, tell me you don't understand how HIPAA works without saying I don't understand how HIPAA works. And Michael Leardman says, buddy, my wife was one of the five paralegals who worked on creating the HIPAA law. Try, try again. Well, in that case, you should talk to your wife because HIPAA is the, HIPAA co protects covered entities, covered entities from sharing information about your medical history. You know who it doesn't cover? You. It doesn't cover you. You can share your medical information with anyone you damn well please. Your doctor can't, and the pharmacy can't, and all these protected people are, all these protected entities can't, but not you. And someone can ask you any question they want, and you can choose to answer or not, and they can choose to admit you based on that answer or not. So if your wife was one of the five paralegals who worked who, who worked on HIPAA, maybe you should ask her for a better uh, understanding because HIPAA is not violated here, no. From Bad Legal Takes, Ghislaine Maxwell says she will not be testifying, apparently saying, Your Honor, the government has not proven its case beyond a reasonable doubt, and so there's no need for me to testify. Uh-huh. And then George Orwell's ghost says, Why are the media not paying more attention to this? Why are the prosecutors not pushing for her to testify? Uh. And then A. Snillick comes up with the exact right answer. She has a right not to. Correct. George Orwell's ghost over here then says, and the judge knowing the history of the crimes and witnesses can force her to and should. No, no, that's not, no. The witness cannot be forced to testify against themselves. It's, it's right there in the Fifth Amendment. The judge knowing everything about all the crimes in the world does not have anything to say about the Fifth Amendment. In fact, the Fifth Amendment may, if anything, be even more important in that situation, so no.
You can only plead the fifth if you're guilty, no if, ands, or buts. That is that is not legally correct. That is not that is not a legally correct thing, no. Today, Roger Stone pleaded the fifth to the January 6th committee. Who else thinks he's guilty? Well, that's a perfectly valid question to ask. I mean, not necessarily because he pleaded the fifth, but I mean, it's in general fine to ask. Of course he's guilty. That's the whole point of taking the fifth. No. The Fifth Amendment is not pleadable in any act or form of terrorism. Yes, it is. I don't know why you would think that. Why do you think the Fifth Amendment is not pleadable in any act of terrorism? Uh... No, the Fifth Amendment is always an option. Innocent don't pe innocent people don't need the Fifth or pardons. That's just dumb. That's just completely dumb. One of the nice things about pardons on the federal level, by the way, is you can pardon someone before they're even charged, let alone convicted. And one of the nice benefits there, if you do that, is obviously it prevents that person from having to go through the hassle of a criminal trial, which can be quite expensive. So if you're an innocent person, and you can get a pardon, it might very well save you quite a lot of money and time. So, you know, not perfectly useless. The terms of service specifically violate protections of 230 by attempting to control outside of prohibiting illegal content, all content. Section 230 specifically considers this a publisher with different obligations and protections. No, that's... That's not how that works. In fact, it says exactly, literally the exact opposite of that. Like literally the exact opposite of that. Section 230 very specifically says that they're not publishers. That's kind of the whole point. From Alex Leeper. Did you not read what it just said? Did you not read what he just said? Double jeopardy doesn't matter. If there's new evidence found, you can be tried again. No. Oh my God, the experience of doing a comedy show only to have the host dig through your Facebook photos to find, I guess, a photo they thought was hot. I can see how that might be a little bit annoying. Which they did not have permission to use, reproduce, and use. Possibly. But they do. Even though it's entirely unethical, which is debatable, and completely disgusting to be creeping someone's social media like that. I mean, that's a, an opinion that one could hold. Because you left it public on social media, you have legally consent for anyone on the internet to take it and use the image however you want. No, that is not even remotely true. Just because you make it generally available does not mean you've made it public within the sense of public domain. No. Multiple people arrested in New York City for trying to eat in an Applebee's without a vaccine pass. Why are you trying to eat in an Axel, a, Applebee's, but whatever. Violation of Fifth Amendment freedom to travel without due process of law. No. The Fifth Amendment doesn't say anything about freedom to travel. Sue them all. Throw in law, wrongful less while you're at it. No. From jaded vet official, ex ex except that invoking the fifth is exactly an indicator of guilt. No person shall be compelled in a criminal case to be a witness against himself. Inversely, you can't be a witness against yourself if you didn't do anything criminal. Read the words more carefully. Read the words more carefully. It doesn't say you have to be a criminal. It says in any criminal case. So you can be a witness if you didn't do anything criminal because you're in a criminal case. So you only plead the fifth if you're guilty. No, that's not how that works. If Fox News anchors and management were aware of or involved in the planning of January 6th, then FCC should terminate their license to broadcast. You can't use the public airwaves to overthrow the government. And then they say, quite rightly, FCC has no authority over cable television. It shouldn't, but it doesn't. Also further educate you, Fox is registered as an entertainment company on NASDAQ as public traded. That makes it have different rules under the FCC. No. Rather than being listed as a news provider, no. They have different standard regulations based on that listing, no.
OJ Simpson says he avoids Los Angeles because he feels he may be sitting next to whoever did it. O Little Apple comments, can't he literally admit it or at least not deny it because he can't be tried twice for the same charge? Yes. And he's already been sued, so at this point he has no potential liability. And then Song Wukong says, well, you can be charged again if there's new evidence. Admitting it would be new evidence. And then Blag, with potentially even a weirder, weirder, more stupid opinion, you can't self-incriminate unless it's written confession, it isn't evidence. Nope. From Real Housewife of Michigan, the law firm representing the shooter's parents are the same ones who represented Larry Nasser, the disgraced former gymnast doctor. Those, those are known for defending the lowest of the low. Those have committed a sexual assault and rape. That's all you need to know about them. Just, just completely no. Just absolutely no. I mean, just no. No, that's dumb. Is it a bad thing the firm is known for representing rapists or accused rapists? If I was accused of rape, I'd want an attorney with experience on that kind of case. Fair. Real Housewife of Michigan says, I think it's a bad thing they base their career on and advertise that they represent those who have committed sexual crimes. Don't rape anyone and you won't need a lawyer to represent you. Nope, that's definitely, definitely not true. Bachelor Babe says, by the way, Jen Shaw has been investigated since 2019. She was indicted by a grand jury in 2019. A grand jury can't indict you without 100% evidence that you're guilty. Nope. The, the standard is probable cause. It's quite a bit lower than 100%. Uh, no. From Eastern Avenue, you can't charge a husband and a wife with the same crime. Why not? The DOJ has to wait until the January 6th committee writes its conclusion and sends criminal referrals to the Department of Justice. No, they don't. They might want to for various prudential reasons, but they don't have to. The DOJ can investigate at the same time Congress investigates. They're two different branches of government and they can both investigate at the same time and do whatever if they want, it's fine. Regarding Kyle Rittenhouse, the source says, no, Kyle won his case, self-defense is the verdict. Civil suits cannot overturn that wake, wake up. Different standards of proof, ma'am. He won his criminal case, not talking criminal, talking civil. He and his family will likely be sued off the river in part because of what he did and didn't do in the, after he shot those men. Possibly. And then the source says, he's free. The criminal case trumps the civil case. No, they're completely different and one does not trump the other. That's not how any of those things happened uh, at all. Let me pause at this point because I've seen a couple super chats have come in. And uh, let me answer a few of your super chats because uh, I want to make sure to acknowledge all you guys. Yeah. We're having fun together. I call this fun, right? You're having fun. This is fun. I'm having fun. Oh, okay. So apparently the Nuremberg Code was not that you didn't suggest abandoning the Nuremberg Code. Okay. Well, I apologize then. Sorry. My bad. Uh, my bad. I apparently have spread some fake news. That's not something the Nurm that's not something EU had said. So strike that. Reverse that. Uh ten dollars from Super 
this is ten dollar super chat from john o'brien i'm getting tired of saying this getting tired of saying this exculpatory statements are usually hearsay incriminating evidence are party admission nothing you say can help you in a police interrogation right correct 499 from d watt who said salute salute to you as well 25 dollars from mac grandall you touched on something important. Let people help encourage them to express their thoughts. If it's hasteful or otherwise disgusting, now everyone can see it. Expose it to the daylight. Not for at least reasons that we might be able to encourage them not to have that opinion anymore. Five dollars from Anti Kami. Before you do, how salty do soft sits make you? They're 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 annoying. Two dollars from STFU FFS. The soft sit delusion is ubiquitous. Sad. I agree. 5 N OK or 50 N OK. Uh saying, are you taking the side of road pirates against the proud independent boat captains? Also should bring up donut operator Sobsit bingo sheet. That sounds like fun. Five dollars from STFU. If Sobsits are foreign citizens, do they even have constitutional constitutional rights? Yes. Everyone's protected by our constitution. So sure, sure. I know Scott said says everyone has due process, but freedom of movement? Yeah. Within the country, sure, why not? State to state, no papers, man. 1999 from Angry Patriot. Here's some money. Please spend it all in one place. I think I will do exactly that. $1.99 from Johnny F. Face. The confidence of people making these claims. $4.99 from Johnny F. Face. When I take a lady to a nice restaurant, I always carry her tray. $1.99 from Johnny F. Face. Bonnie and Clyde were in the clear. Shame. $5 from Anti Commie. All right, and uh, let's go through doing some more stupid legal takes because we're having some fun here and all that good stuff. I don't see the bad legal take here. Happy Shut the Fuck Up Friday from Lawyer Cat. Happy Shut the Fuck Up Friday. That's always good advice. Absolutely spot on legal take. Don't talk to the police. Anything you say can and may be used against you in the court of law. Shut the fuck up. And then it says, and you can't quite read it, not if someone made up something about you. Without your side of the story, you may be arrested and never get the chance to tell your side of the story. You, you will have the chance to tell your side of the story uh, later. So that's, that's fine. You can't extort anyone over something that isn't true. Hello, Michael Avenatti, who did exactly that. Just got kicked out of Starbucks in LA because I didn't show proof of vaccination. Why do people live here? Maybe it's because Starbucks is a privately owned business and they can refuse service to any customer for any reason. As long as it's not protected, sure. Think of it this way. No shirt, no shoes, no shot, no service. Can they refuse service to black people? No, because that's a protected reason. Again, according to Supreme Court, you can because of how they ruled in the back Baker versus gay couple. That's not at all what they said at even close. It is not a smart business choice, but any means you can. No, you cannot. You cannot discriminate against people by on a protected class. That is not no. Mom says son was vaccinated in exchange for pizza at a school without her consent. 
I can see how that would irritate you. Depends on the age. Anyone over the age of 12 can get vaccinated. They do not need parental consent. I don't believe that's true. It gets raided. You need to shut the fuck up. If you shut the fuck up. Let's listen to some good legal Martin advice. Martin Craig, Pop Brothers at Law. We've been warning people, if you are working for an unlicensed dispensary, an illegal dispensary, and it gets raided, you need to shut the fuck up. If you shut the fuck up, you have a good, good chance that we can make the case go away. Case in point, three employees of an illegal shop were busted during a raid. Two of them said, oh, I'm just volunteering here. The third guy shut the fuck up. And the DA did not prosecute the guy who shut the fuck up. They can't prove what you were doing there. If you're a customer, patient, walked in to go to the bathroom, they don't know. You got to shut the fuck up, and it's shut the fuck up Friday. So review the script. What do you say when the cop first pulls you over? Why'd you pull me over? And when he keeps asking questions? I'm not discussing my day. And they ask more questions? Am I being detained or am I free to go? And if detained, what do you say? I invoke the fifth. And then what do you do? You shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up Friday. Never answer questions when the cops ask. Have safe holidays. Tip of the day. Well, these guys are speaking some truths, man. They are definitely speaking some truth. Uncivil law proves this message, man. Does one need to affirm the right to remain silent? Yes, you do. As a matter of fact, you do need to say, I'm remaining silent. Yes. Or I wish to remain silent. Or I am remaining silent. Yes, you do need to say it. I know it's a little bit weird because you have to say it, but you do. Um... I wish I here's here's what you here's what you say guys look it's not hard it's not hard guys it's really not hard just just memorize these two sentences and repeat them like a mantra I want to remain silent I want an attorney I want to remain silent I want an attorney I want to remain silent I want an attorney um I want to remain silent. Um, I want an attorney. Just, just say those two things and repeat. It's fine. Repeat as needed. At some, at some point in the interview, the police may try to do something that may, may get you to feel like you want to say something, right? They may want to get you to do something that make you feel like you say something. So they can't ask you any questions, but they may try to like do things that are within the bounds. And if you ever feel like saying something, all you have to do is repeat. You know, that's always an option, right? If you feel like you have to say something at exactly that second, or you're just going to burst, what do you do? What do you do? Um, I wish to remain silent. Um, I want an attorney. Peace be to you. <laughs> Just repeat as needed. Yeah, I mean, you can do it in mantra form if it will help. You Mantra form is okay. You can sing it in a song. You could sing it in a rap. You know, just as so long as you say those words and not other words, you know. You could do it You could do it in a dramatic reenactment. You could do it in your favorite William Shatner impression. You got all kinds of fun choices, guys. Just as so long as it's those words and only those words and no more words. Those are great. Ruth Bader Ginsburg strongly believed that people should be able to do whatever they want with their bodies except kneel. And then Ruth Bader Ginsburg decided to shy in, decided to weigh in on the controversy about people kneeling during the anthem, saying it's really dumb, but she wouldn't lock up a person with their doing it. So that's just failure to read. Ruth, Ruth Bader Ginsburg believes that you have the right to do whatever she what you want with her body. She just thinks it's dumb. What Colin Kaepernick did is tantamount to shouting fire in a crowded theater. You know, me and every other lawyer would be happy if fire in a crowded theater just went away. We just we just get the rid of the case. We'd be so much happier forever. The Pop Brothers have more videos. Oh, 
we got to watch some more of their videos i think we got to find more of these videos and we got to definitely we got we got to learn some more truths from the pot pot brothers attorneys at law hold on oh yeah let's learn some more from the pot brothers are they hiring i'm available i should get an interview with them we should we should definitely we should definitely do a uh, a, co a collab stream with the Pop Brothers attorneys at law. That sounds that sounds like a great thing to do. Let's watch let's watch some more videos from the Pop Brothers so we can learn more and exciting things about uh you know how to shut the fuck up. Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law. We've been warning people if you are working for an unlicensed dispensary. All right, so we saw that one already. So that's their most popular video of all time. I don't want to discuss my day with you. Okay. So Am I free to leave? Should I know? Should I get a cop? Am I free to leave? No, you're not free to leave right now. Should I call, get a cop to come and explain to you why we're, why we're here? I don't wish to discuss my day. I just need to know where you're coming from. I don't wish to discuss my day. So? Am I being detained? Get a cop. Am I being detained? Not yet. Hey. Yo, Am I free to leave? No, no. If they say, no, by, by the way, don't ask the follow-up question. Don't ask the follow-up question is my advice. Don't ask the follow-up question. If they say, if you say, am I being detained, detained, and they say no, say, thank you, I'm going to leave and start leaving. Don't ask, am I free to go? They just told you, don't ask the question again. This is my personal advice. You do you. But my personal advice is, advice is if you say, am I being detained, and they say no, not yet, you should say, thank you, I'm leaving. You don't ask for permission. May I leave? You just state it. Thank you. I'm leaving. And then leave. And if they detain you, then you know you're being detained, right? Because they just told you you weren't being detained. Don't ask. If they, I mean, don't, you know, that's, uh, that's a mistake I think people make. So just a little tip for me. You are not free to leave. Am I being detained? So I'm free to leave. He can, he can so I'm free to leave? No, no. He can come and explain to you. What's your name, sir? He, no, I don't have What is your name? The cop is coming. Go, go talk to him. No. Sir. Sir. Am I free to leave? What's going on? I don't wish to discuss my day with him. Where are you coming from? I don't wish to discuss my day. You don't want to talk? No, sir. All right. You're What's your name and badge number? You're free to go. Thank you, sir. Yep. Be careful. There you go, man. That's it. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. You know? You're free to go. Okay, thank you. Right? He came up. He's like, I know. I don't wish to discuss my day. You don't want to talk? Nope. And he says, you're bad enough, jury. He says, it's free to go. Please, for the love of God, when they tell you you're free to go, leave. The cop didn't do anything wrong. You don't need his badge number. Okay? The cop is not doing anything wrong at that second. Give the guy a break. Okay? Don't ask for his badge number. And if you, if you do and he tells you to leave, just fucking leave. You don't... There's no reason for you to know his badge number. There's nothing for you to even complain about. The, the cop did everything right. Why are you asking for his badge number, man? You know, don't be a, don't be a dick. You do not need that information now. <coughs> Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law. We've been warning people if you are working. Is this the same video twice? What is the deal here? Why do they have the va same video up twice? Oh, they just post the same video every Friday. Is that the deal? Hold on. Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law. It's Shut the Fuck Up Friday, and we are here with Michael Rappaport, and we are going to review that script for you. Mm -hmm. Big Brother, what do you say when the cops first pull you over? Why'd you pull me over? And when they start asking questions? I'm not discussing my day or night, sir. Mm -hmm. And if they keep asking questions? Politely say, am I being detained or am I free to go? And if detained, what do you say? Sir, I invoke the fifth. Mm -hmm. And then Michael Rappaport, what do you do? You shut the fuck up. Simple, 25 words, politely, respectfully, review it, not only on Shut the Fuck Up Friday, but every day. And don't forget to shut the fuck up. What are we supposed to do? Shut the fuck up. And then when the cops ask more questions? You shut the fuck up. What if they put the cups you on you? You shut the fuck up. <laughs> what if you they... don't say a fucking word. You know what you do? You shut the fuck up. And they take you to the station? You shut the fuck up. And then they try to let you, you go. You shut your fucking big fucking mouth. <laughs> shut the fuck up. And that's the tip of the day. Now, I do like this. I, I will, I will, I will, I will slightly, very slightly 
disagree with my comrades in arms here because I, I think rather than saying I invoke the fifth, I th invoke the fifth, I think much better is to say, I wish to remain silent, I want a lawyer. Because those are more the those are more the phrases that are more like magic phrases, right? It's not that saying invoke the fifth is wrong. It's just like I think saying I think saying, um, for my money, I I I want to remain silent, I want a lawyer as a mantra is is better than saying I invoke the fifth. So I know it's twice as many words my way, but you know, I think it's better and it covers all your bases. And it's a little bit less ambiguous. So I think it's slightly better. And uh, and if they keep asking you questions, you can either you, and and then if they keep asking you questions, you have one of two options, right? You can either shut the fuck up, which is their advice, which is perfectly good advice. But you, so you can either shut the fuck up or repeat the mantra. So one of those two things, nothing else. Shut the fuck up though also works after you've done the done the thing though. So a very small, very small disagreement with my uh, brothers in arms, but otherwise it's it's great shit. Let's watch some more shit. Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law, as promised, how to get pulled over. You're driving along, minding your own business, and suddenly you see those lights come up behind you, and you get a little nervous and shaky. You need to immediately pull over to the right as soon as it is safe and clear. Use your blinker. You don't want to get caught for not using your blinker as well. Pull over to the side of the road. Turn your engine off and make sure your windows roll down just enough to pass your documents through, license, insurance, and registration. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. Make sure the officer knows where your hands are at all times. And when he comes up on you and asks you anything, that's when you're going to start in with the script. But it's very important that you keep your license, insurance, and registration nearby. We recommend right up on the visor in the little slot, slot that's there so you can pull it. He always knows where your hands are. Don't reach for anything. And we will continue with more info. Martin Craig, Pop Brothers at Law, part two of how to get pulled over. You want to keep your license, insurance, and registration where you can get it easily. If it's not up on your visor, keep it in your wallet or your purse. Keep those items in the center console. It's a super chat. There's a super chat that says um, from Roosevelt Media News. Um, says, what do you say when an officer stops you and asks you, do you know what, do you know when, what, do you know you're driving over the speed limit? You could simply say, I don't wish to discuss it. That'd be fine. Or I wish to remain silent. That's part of the mantra. I mean, you could say that. So yeah, I mean, if, if you're, if you're pulled over by a cop and they ask you, did you know you're driving the speed limit? You can simply say, I wish to remain silent. I'd recommend again, saying it verbally. It's also very, very good like just because if it if they're wearing a body cam and it gets caught by the body cam and like stuff happens right that you've affirmatively invoked it so it takes away the ambiguity there's there's a potential argument like if you don't say it there's some ambiguity there and i'm just trying to like solve the ambiguity problem making it easier for you so i recommend just saying i'd recommend i wouldn't say i want a lawyer i just simply say because you're not under arrest um i'd rather i just go with i want to remain silent or I, or I or you could go with something like a slight variation. I prefer not to discuss it. You know, something like that. And yet and sir is always good. Sir or ma'am as is appropriate. Or officer. Some version of respect is nice. Just so yes, yeah, sir, I don't wish to respect it. Or sir, I don't wish to discuss that. Sir, I wish to leave. That'd be those would be some good options. Um uh, Take your hands from the steering wheel, let the officer know, hey, I'm reaching for my ID, it's right over here in my wallet, in my purse. Move slowly, get it, hand it over to him. Most likely he's going to say, do you know why I pulled you over? And what are you going to say? Why'd you pull me over? You don't want to admit, I was speeding, I ran a red light, they want to try to trap you into admitting that. That's also a good option, right? Just ask the question back. Do you know why I pulled you over? Why'd you pull me over? Also, strictly speaking, you don't know why. You don't know why, you can't know why. You don't know. It could be anything. So, like, do you know how fast you're going? You can say how how fast was I going? But I wouldn't go with that. I just wish I just go with I wish to remain silent. But you know, these are slight variations, right? These are slight variations. So it's like you're not like you're going to be screwed one way or another. I just you know I think mine is slightly more optimal. Then he's going to start asking questions, and then what do you say? 
I'm not discussing my day, sir. And then when they ask more questions, what do you say? Am I being detained or am I free to go? And if detained, what do you say? I say I invoke the fifth. And then what do you do? I shut the fuck up. Right. You don't tell the cops to shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. Stay tuned. We're going to teach you how to get detained and if detained and how to get arrested and the protocol for that in the next tip tomorrow. Tip of the day. Martin Craig, Pop Brothers at Law, part three of how to get pulled over. Where we left off, you were being detained. You'd already invoked the fifth. The cop said you're being detained. You get out of the car, lock the door, shut it, and then you comply with the cop's commands. So he's in your pocket. Put your hands behind your back, get on the ground. Whatever he asks you to do, that's what you're going to do. Remember, if he and, says... And be respectful the whole time. And if he says, why can't you cooperate, just answer a few questions. Answering questions is not cooperating. So you just shut the fuck up. And you let them arrest you if that's what they're going to do. And if you have to repeat, I'm not discussing my day or evening. You just keep repeating that nicely and politely and respectfully. See, they've got the idea, too. They they have to repeat the mantra, too, right? If you need to say something, they've got some slightly different mantras, right? They've got some slightly different mantras, but their idea is the same. Like, if you need to say it, just say it again. I'm not discussing my day. Or I want to remain silent. Or, I want to remain silent, or I don't wish to discuss that with you. Sir. It never hurts to throw in a sir, ma'am, officer, as the case may be, you know. So, sir or ma'am is always good, you know. And always be calm with the cops. Let them be the aggressor. Then they're going to take you into the station. They're going to try to intimidate you and still that. get try you to, to cop. And in California, when they try to do that field sobriety test on you, touch your nose, that's voluntary. You don't have to do it. If you get taken into the station, you have to do blood, breath, or urine. And it'll take your license for a year. That's the tip of the day. Okay, good tips, man. Good tips. Uh, very good tips indeed. All right, what else we got from our friends here? You know why I pulled you over? I was going five over in the school zone. <laughs> you sure were. Where are you coming from so fast? South of Broadway in Maine. You understand that that's a hotbed of drug activity. Do you go there often? It's on my way to work. Okay. I need you to step out of the vehicle, sir. You're being detained. <laughs> this is an example of what not to do when getting pulled over. Know your rights and do it like this. You know why I pulled you over? No, why did you pull me over? Because you were going five miles an hour over the speed limit. Where are you coming from? Uh, I'm not discussing my day. Not discussing your day, huh? Well, all I gotta say is that uh, it smells like marijuana here. You've been smoking something, son? Sir, am I being detained or am I free to go? You're being detained. Now tell me something. Is there marijuana in this vehicle? Uh, I invoked the fifth. Yeah. Pop Brothers at Law. <laughs> shut the... Okay, that's probably that last part's not going to happen, but you know, I just I wish to remain silent. I think it's slightly better than I invoke the fifth. Uh, just a personal thing. Invoke the fifth isn't wrong. I just think I wish to remain silent is slightly better um, because I think I invoke I invoke the fifth is a little bit too lawyery and it's a little bit too soft city and it's a little bit too ambiguous. It's slightly ambiguous as to which part of the fifth you're invoking. Because I mean, the fifth. The fifth covers all sorts of interesting rights. Did you know that the fifth? Are you pleading the fifth? Are you pleading the fifth because the government is trying to take your land, and you want uh, and you want uh, fair market value? Is that the reason you're pleading the fifth? I'm confused. You know, so I think I, I'm wish dreaming sound is slightly better. I. Uh, Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law. Listen to a couple of these audios that we got from some followers who utilized the script and maintained their rights, even though the cops were being abusive and even called one of them a dick. Listen up. How much have you been smoking? Uh, I'm not discussing the dick. I'm not discussing my day is good. I like that. I like that, actually. It's a nice, good answer. I'm not discussing my day. I'm not discussing my day. Huh? I'm not discussing my day. No, I'm just asking. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't want to answer that question. Okay. Is that weed on Good. the side here? Uh, wait. I don't know. I'm not discussing my day. Okay. Well, you know it's illegal to have marijuana inside your car, in the, uh, without the proper container. I'm not discussing anything, sir. Okay. So he's being a dick a little bit. So. All right. 
sorry, man. Check this out. Go ahead. And... You have the right to be a dick, though. You have the constitutional right to be a dick. But he's being polite. He's being polite. Although, although in the officer's opinion, being the dick, uh, you know, dick. Uh, maybe throwing a sir is always good, you know? You have any pot? You know, it's probably legal. I'm just, I'm not, I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to answer that question. Some version of that would be helpful. I want to, I just prefer to remain silent. That also works. These are all good options. I'm not discussing my day is pretty good though for a first line. I'm not gonna lie, that's actually pretty good. Step out for me. Can you I'm gonna use that. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you right now in a second. Step out. Can I just want to know what I did. Okay, I can smell marijuana coming from the car. I'm gonna search it. In California, smell is not probable cause. Yeah, it is. No, it is not. Yeah, it is. I could verify how much there is in the vehicle. I don't know whether it's probable cause or not, but whether or not it's probable cause, like. I don't think I'd argue it. I'm not sure I'd argue it. Because if it's not probable cause, and that's the basis for the search, right? I smell marijuana. If that's the basis for the search, right? And he says that, then everything he finds is his fruit of the poisonous tree. So I'm not sure if I approve of this argument. You know? I asked you if you guys smoked. You told me you're not going to discuss your day, so I guess I'll find out by myself. Go ahead and step up. That's fair. All right. If you would have just told me. I'm recording just so you know, just for both of us. Go leave this in the car. Okay. So in both those instances, they stuck to their guns, they stuck to the script, they didn't let the cop intimidate them, even though one called the guy a dick, and the other cop said, thought he knew the law better than what we teach, which is smell in California is not probable cause. Alone. So what happened in both those instances one of them who got pulled over for not having proper registration got a ticket for registration. They searched the car, found about an eighth of weed, and then gave it back. That's the cop who said smell was probable cause. I wonder why he didn't take the weed. Or give him a ticket for open container. Didn't do that either. They just wrote him off for the registration. The other guy who got pulled over and called him a dick for asserting his rights, he ended up with an open container, but we think the search was illegal and we're gonna be fighting that case. All over a roach too that the cop found. Right, one little roach. So you gotta be careful out there and, and stick to your guns. Don't let the cops intimidate you. You hear it. They're gonna claim they know the law better. And these guys did it very politely, invoked their, uh, invoke the script and invoked their rights. And it should be known, we're gonna fight these tickets, uh, traffic tickets. We're gonna go to battle with these to make sure that everybody's safe. When you invoke your rights, you're not being a dick. And these guys clearly were not being dicks. They were very polite. It was a great example of what to do. Stand up for your rights. The more people that do this, the lesser cops can be able to fuck with us. And stay tuned, because we're going to give Mr. Checkpoint this information along with their badge numbers and names, and we're going to call out these officers from Costa Mesa and Albany, California. That's where these two uh, instances happen. So there you go. That's the tip of the day. I like these I like these attorneys very, very much. Everything they're saying is very good advice. Everything they're saying is very, very good, good advice. You know, stuff I would say, maybe slightly differently phrased, but they're, no, they're giving good advice. I, I, I do like the, I don't want to discuss my day as an answer though. That's a good standby answer. I'm definitely going to steal that and teach it like it was my idea because ideas are not protected by law under copyright. So I'm definitely going to steal that and claim it was mine. It's my idea now. <laughs> See how smart I am? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all that good stuff. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Um, Uh, 199 from Johnny F. Face. Your lawyer will thank you for using the mantra. Yeah. Five dollars from Peter. I feel like trying to invoke the fifth in a minor traffic violation is a great way to get a lot more tickets. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I wouldn't recommend that phraseology. I would not recommend using I invoke the fifth. It's it's too formal, it's too legally, it's too legalese, it's too I, I don't I don't think that's a good way to go. Um I don't like that phrase. I don't like that. Um I prefer not to talk about it. Like you don't even have to say I I would I want to remain silent unless you get into escalating steps. But uh, you could even say, like, I prefer not to talk about or I prefer not to answer. So you could be a little less formal about that, too. But, yeah, I think invoke, saying I invoke the fifth is not a good way to go. I think it's going to I think I think that's much more likely than alternative phrases to put the officer off and to cause the situation to potentially escalate when an alternate phrase might cause it to deescalate. I think it's not optimal. Um. 
Five dollars from Ann Feinstein. I'm a concealed carry permit and always carry. Should I hand over my CCP? How do I inform? How do I inform the cops that I'm carrying without alarming anyone? That's how I do it. Yeah, that's how I do it. That's exactly how I do it. Um, your, I can't give you legal advice, but I can tell you what I would do. And I'm not saying that this is the way to do it in your state. You know, you have to. Well, let's cover some ground. First of all, some states are some states are shall inform and some not. So first thing you have to determine is if you're in a state where you have to inform. And I will tell you what I will do, but this is not legal advice for you. If I were traveling with a firearm and I were pulled over, I would hand them both my license and my CC. I would either do one of two things. I would either get my license out and my CCP and hand them both with the CCP on top, or more likely actually, more likely, and this is what I did last time, which is slightly better. I put my hands on top of the car and as soon as they as soon as they come over and say hello, I'd be like, just to inform you, officer, here's what you say. Here's what you okay, listen to me carefully. This this will this will count as legal advice, okay? Here's legal advice. Do not say I have a gun. Bad plan. Don't say that, please. But what you could say instead is, I have a concealed carry permit. And you either let them draw the inference and ask the question, right? So this is what I typically do, right? I put my hands on the wheel. I think because this is better than handing them the per handing it to them. I think it's slightly better. I put my hands on the wheel and they say, how are you doing? I say, I just want to let you know I have a concealed carry permit. And that's all I say. Because I'm expecting them to draw the next logical conclusion. Be like, are you armed? Yes, I am. And my firearm is where it happens to be you know it's in my glove box it's in my center council it's in my pocket it's you know whatever it happens to be and that's what you do to do rather than do not do not say do not say i have a gun do not say i have a firearm none of these words this will not end well on any level for anybody do not do that okay say instead you can you can you can say i have a concealed carry license and i am carrying don't say, I have a gun. Don't ever utter the phrases, I have a gun. Just say, I'm carrying, if you have to say something. But much better, in my opinion, just say, I have a concealed carry permit, and let them draw the conclusion, and let them ask you the question. And if they ever say something like, will you hand it to me? The answer is no. No, but I will let you retrieve it, right? The reason why, by the way, you never, ever, 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 ever want to hand the officer you're gone, even if they ask, is because what you don't know and what he might not know is that his buddy just pulled over behind him to assist. And his buddy is now coming up on the opposite side of the car. And his buddy, who didn't see any of these things, sees you now with a gun in your hand. And his buddy's going to shoot you eight times. So whatever you do, whatever you do, don't hand the gun. Don't hand them the gun. Don't touch the gun. Just don't touch it at all, like ever, okay? Just be like, I'm carrying, it's on my person, right? And the last time this happened to me, the last time it happened to me, um, I was carrying in my pocket. You know, they said, I want it, I would like to take it off you just for my own protection. I said, that's fine, right? I said, that's fine. So I got out, they said, we step out of the car. I said, I sure will, right? So I unlocked the door, hand them, I unlocked the door, I closed the door again, right? put my hands right on the car, assume the position style, and I say, because this is how I carry, I say it's in my right front pocket. It's the right front pocket and it's a Glock, so please be careful when removing it because it has no external safety, right? And they all they all use Glock, so of course they know that, but I'm just gonna remind them, right? So I just, you know, like let them take it and we're all buddies now, it's fine. So yeah, that's, that's there's some good pro tips, you know? Yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I, yeah. Some states you don't need a concealed carry permit. This is fair. This is a fair point. Um, yeah, if you're in a state where you don't need a concealed carry permit, then uh, I haven't really thought about how to deal with that contingency. Uh, if you're in a state where you don't need a concealed carry permit, you're on your own on that one until I come up with a better answer. So uh, you can always get one. You know, just get a Florida one. Get a Florida one. Uh, you can pocket carry a Glock. Yeah, I can. I can carry a Glock 26 in my front pocket. It'll fit in my front pocket. Um, yeah. 
So you can fit a Glock 20, or at least I can, you can fit a Glock 26 in my front pocket. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, okay, well, anyways, I'm gonna sign off for now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just say you have concealed carry, that can work too, I guess, that'll work. Get, or, or Utah, Utah's another option. The nice thing about Florida over Utah is Utah, you have to get uh, specialized instructors. There's more limited instructors, but it's about the same on reciprocity. Um, it's about the same. I forget who's in who's in the lead. I think Utah might have one or two states more than Florida, but they're both really, really good. Um, Florida doesn't require special trainers, so there are more trainers available for Florida. I think Utah is slightly better. I think it's also slightly cheaper because the renewals aren't as expensive, but you know, I have Florida and I pay like, I don't even know, $120 every five years or something ridiculous. It's not, a, I, I think in Utah, you pay like a $5 renewal every five years or something. But it's like, you know, I mean, it's every five years, guys. I mean, come on. But yeah, and one of the two would be fine. That Utah is also good. So anyways, I'm going to sign off for now. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please remember, please remember to give it a like. Please remember to subscribe and all the rest of it. And I'm going to sign off for now. Till later, my friends. Cheers and goodbye.